Hello, everybody. It totally did go, and welcome to the transition into this week's Curse of Strahd Indoor Adventure. Uh, so, as you may have guessed, again from that intro, we are playing Curse of Strahd tonight in part two of what will soon be a longer running series. But for right now, we are just looking at uh, this small two-parter to get through Death House uh, until Waterdeep is done. So. You have something to look forward to, a mild spoiler, if you will, uh, as to the events uh, that are going to be taking place post-Waterdeep. Um, and of course, you can find that here at uh, twitch.tv slash the indoor adventurer at 5.30 Pacific Standard Time for all you audio cast listeners in case you wanted to come and join us. Uh, but we're going to go around and introduce ourselves so that way uh, you guys have a general understanding of who we are as players. So, Wings starts off. Hello, everybody. I'm Wings, or also Danae Keener, and I am here to be the DM. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, everybody. I am RJ here on the show, and I'm playing Bartholomew, the Human Ranger. Hi, I'm LB Hackamup, and I am playing Silmi, the wizard who has to hide her powers for reasons. Hi, I'm Tyler. I'm playing Victor, the high elf bard. And I am the indoor adventurer, and I am going to be playing uh, my dear boy Kefris, a barbarian who is yet to rage. And that is, uh, that is where we are currently at with our characters. So uh, there is one other point of order, which is in-store adventures. I don't know if you guys know this, but we got a lot of really sweet merch from the store. <laughs> LB, you seem distraught over the fact that you currently do not have a mug. Well, let me tell you. Here at In Store Adventures, you can actually find yourself a pretty reasonably priced mug, uh, as well as we have our model that says Indoor Adventures, but then Danae was also holding up a textless one which shows the symbol of our channel, which is the Dice House, because we want to turn your guild house into a guild home. And that is the guarantee here on Indoor Adventures, and you can get that with every little bit of merchandise found in its store adventures. There are other ways that you can help support the show as well, such as patreon.com slash the indoor adventurer, where you can sign up for all sorts of stuff, including gaining access to our Discord server. Also, if you have Amazon Prime and would like to subscribe to the channel, there is Twitch Prime, which gives you one free subscription every month. Who knew? I certainly didn't until a while ago, so I'm letting you know that now, so that way, who knows, maybe you decide to subscribe to this channel and join our Discord that way. So, without further ado, that is my spiel. Danae, back to you. Hello, and welcome, everyone, back to Barovia, where we are, well, I suppose, uh, uh, we should very quickly go over what happened last week. Uh, we met our sibling duo, uh, Kefris and Silmi Malrezka, as they were on their way to go and marry off poor Silmi to some boring nobleman, <clears throat> uh, along with their maid, Maybelle. And they met, well, they got a little bit lost took a wrong turn to Albuquerque right into Barovia and they met one of the locals, Bartholomew. And uh, from there, they were swept into an adventure with this strange high elf Vic and uh, these ghosts in this terribly, terribly haunted house. Um, and you were all about to enter the basement when we cut for the week and leveled up to level two. So, uh, the stairs that lead down to the basement from the attic, because that's where the stairs were, uh, are a, a wooden spiral staircase that go down through the house all the way down and into the basement. And you can, you can feel when it changes from above ground, like actual architecture house with wooden walls and everything to below ground basement. Uh, the walls kind of are damp uh, when they put a hand on it and comes away. Uh, you 
it, it is dark. It's pitch black, can't see a thing in front of your face, unless you have dark vision. Raise your hand if you have dark vision. I don't think, do half elves have dark vision? I don't think so. Don't they have know. low light. Low light, okay. Not true dark vision. All right, well. It's, if it becomes apparent that everyone else is having trouble seeing, uh, <laughs> Victor will cast light. Um, I'll just cast it on myself, so stay close. All right, so Victor will cast light and uh, the four of you continue to spiral downward into the darkness, uh, which is now a bit less dark, thanks to Vic. Uh, you will find yourself in a very cold place. Um, it's a little bit humid down here in the basement and the stairs open up to a hallway. And uh, the farther and farther you get down into these stairs, you can hear a weird rhythmic sound. Um, there's a lot of echoing and it's very muffled. So you can't exactly make out what it is, but it becomes more and more clear that this has a vocal origin that like, it, it's like a bunch of voices saying something together, like a, like a chant. And uh, who's, who's going first? Like, can I get a marching order? Uh, I'll go first. I'll oh. the Unless uh, Bartholomew. Uh, I'll bring up the rear, uh, the tw Oh, I keep saying siblings. Twins. We're siblings. 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 The siblings, probably in the middle. All right. And who is who is carrying the bodies of the children that y'all found up in the attic? Bartholomew. That's right, Bartholomew's bag. That's right. Um, Bart's <clears throat> bag of bones. Bart's bag of bones. Bart's bag of bones. Great band. <laughs> <clears throat> Serious. <laughs> for taking this seriously. Okay. It's dark. It's wet. It's cold. And now you are in a basement. Uh, Vix, is the light like just floating after you or is it, did you cast it on a particular item? Yeah, he, uh, he would have casted it kind of on his clothes, but just like kind of like a light shining outwards, kind of like a flashlight attached to your chest. Right. Okay. <laughs> uh, so as... Uh, Vic comes down the stairs. Uh, he will come into a long, long hallway uh, that goes off in both directions. And you will find uh, several places where it branches off. Um, down the hallway to your right, uh, it appear, uh, you can see what appears to be a table and down the hallway to your left there is just a, a hook uh further to the left it uh turns left down that way and um there are branches within this hallway that you're standing in uh to your right there are two branches and to your left there is one branch and the uh, that that kind of rhythmic chanting is that just kind of all around us, or does that seem to be coming from any particular direction? You can't exactly tell where it's coming from here. It's 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 just sort of permeating throughout this entire structure. Okay. Um, well, Vic was a fan of mazes as a kid, and his technique was always to hug the right wall. <laughs> okay. And I start off by going. Just follow the wall to the right, if that uh, leads over to the area with the table. Sorry. <laughs> uh, uh, are the ghost children with us? No. They stayed up in the attic. Okay. We just took their bones. Yep, you are carrying their bones. As well as the bones of the, uh, of the, the nursemaid. Man. Yes. Because, screw tradition, we're going to bury the nursemaid with the kids. Yeah, fuck these people. <laughs> 
<laughs> Look, I just know that there needs to be a little bit of an afterlife ceremony of some sort, usually done to prevent asshole kids from coming back as ghosts. It's a little late for that, don't you think? A little bit. Mm. I will admit that. Should not we be quiet? That's very true. I... I... Sorry. Mm. So, hush tones, hush tones. Where should we go? You said hug the right wall? Yeah. I was not very good at mazes as a child, so I'm going to trust your discretion. And that's Bart. Oh. Bart, do you have anything that you would like to direct us to? Is there anything about these mazes that you know just from... Who is Bart? My name is Speedy. Speedy. His name is Speedy. 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 Sorry. He, he, he reminds did me never of someone. Actually, he did never actually tell you no. his name. Speedy. Do you have any idea? They're uh, like, oh, it's, it's the Barovian left. And it's actually a right or something? Like, do you have... Can I make a survival check to see where the traffic has been going? Oh, certainly. Yes. Uh, you can actually see lots of uh, mm. footprints on the floor. There's a 16. 16. Very good. All right. Um, so, yes, there are a lot of footprints on the floor. It seems like there has been a lot of traffic through here. Like, more than just the family, it seems. Like, lots and lots of people have been down here at some point. Um, as there are just footprints and a well-worn path in uh, the dirt floor. And um, honestly, there there is no one direction that they have gone. Like, uh, left, right, doesn't seem to matter. It's, it's worn just as much either way. Two halflings lay here. <laughs> they I rolled don't over understand. this way. Their bonds were cut. What would drive them to into the forest? What the what? madness drove me there? The anyway, uh, <sighs> it looks like there were a lot of people down here, more than just the parents. Recently? <laughs> yes. No. No. These are like old footprints. It's it, it's it is it is old footprints. Yes, the they are not fresh. Tracks are. A bit worn. I can't make heads or tails of it. You will, however, notice that the tracks do not go off into the branches at all. It, j it seems like that just wasn't very frequented. <clears throat> and it looks like the branch sections of this place uh, don't have much traffic to them at all, so if you want to check those out first. Right. Well, we're here for the monster, if there is a monster, and to lay the kids' bones to rest. Though I guess we should be looking for the catacombs, first of all. And maybe the catacombs aren't very well often traveled, so maybe the branches? Mostly for the family's discussion, not for outside influences. Mm-hmm. We can look. Why am I talking like that? I have low int. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Nosebleed. <laughs> <laughs> well, perhaps we can find some clues as to what kind of creature it is in these offshoots. Do you perhaps. see any? Do you see any creature um, footprints? Do I? Is it just humans? Humanoids? Uh, let's get one more survival check. Me. Oh God. Uh oh, that's a natural eighteen plus five. So. Ooh, that's really good. All right. So uh, it's it was harder to make out before, but you s can tell that there are some telltale signs of something with claws passing through here. Mm. Something. Not not too big. Uh. Not too big. Uh, like, conveniently enough, like, you, you can even, like, put your hand down over where you find this this clawed print, um, and your hand fits just, just snugly in there. It's as if a hand with claws was there. About my size, something clawed came through here. 
I'm sorry, what? Something my size, about five foot nine, with claws. claws. That's game what... through. No, I, he... I, that's what I thought you said, and I just, <laughs> you know, do we really? We have to take care of the monster. We have to bury the children. Like and you. the nursemaid. I'm going to give Carefus a nice uh, comfort <sighs> pat on the back. That's right, buddy. We got this. That's fine. And I'll just go back to tightening the red uh, <laughs> the red cords around my arms. Um, I'm going to look in the room on the right. All right. Um, it seems to open up into kind of like a smaller <clears throat> alcove on its own. And on either side of the alcove, to the left and to the right, there are large rock slabs. And it is labeled on each one of these slabs. On the left one, it says Rosvalda Durst. And on the right slab, it says Thornvalt Durst. Oh, wonderful. Uh, I found the tombs. Bring the bones, oh. please. Opa. Good work. Nice. You know what I just realized? What? We, ha we have jumbled all of the bones together. <laughs> and there are, two, oh. there are two places to <laughs> bury them. There are different sizes. There's like the. We have three different sizes of bones. <laughs> there are, yeah. Exactly. There are over a hundred bones in your hand. Well, Bart just walks into the so tomb, I... drops no, the bag. Not. <laughs> she just looks at her hand. And she's like three, six, nine, twelve. Damn, she fine. No. <laughs> They're all in here. I don't believe you, brother. I would like to uh, look at my books. <laughs> it's very hard. Guys, I will let you guys figure this out. It's, just... it's very hard. It, it, it's like low light reading in here. <clears throat> it's quite dark. There are 27 bones in the You son of a bitch. I was like, there's no way, because there's like 300 <sighs> bones in your body. So you liar, liar, pants on fire. That is why I am not a doctor. <laughs> <laughs> Right, so burying the children? Yep. I'll get to it. <laughs> uh, right. tell, the... Somebody said move the slabs, right? I oh, yeah. Or do, do I need to make a check? They're, yes. they're I can. Closed. I can help lift. They are closed. It's going to require an athletics check to move these slabs. Ooh. Oh, I could do that. If anybody has a crowbar. You can use that uh, to get advantage on the check. I think I actually do have a crowbar. I do. What? Me too. I checked my equipment using D and D Beyond. <laughs> crowbar <laughs> friends, clink. Um, I am not the strongest though. Uh, I am pretty strong. It's one of the things I, I do have going crossbar. for me. Cross. All right. So I'm going to crowbar. try and crossbar. Cr Damn it. <laughs> I'm going to try and use the cross thingy to, to clink it open. Crowbar. That's its name. I want to use the crowbar to open up the thing. Athletics with advantage. Who are you going after first? Um, there's there's Rose's Crypt and Thorn's Crypt. I am going to use uh, to use Thorn's because I told or uh, yeah, Thorn's because I told him that the safest place was with his sister. So if I took away his sister's bones before I took away him, that would be like a really mean thing to do to a ghost. Okay. That one's the one on the right then. That is a total of nine. Total of nine? I got a one and a four on the dice. So that dice is going away for a while. All right. Um, that's, you're, you're, having a, you're having a time, brah. That's not that's <laughs> This is really on there tight. I'll go over there and give him a hand. All right. <laughs> you give me an athletics check with advantage. Uh... Didn't think it would be this difficult. Sorry. Athletics, it's a 13 total. 13? 
Okay, so between the two of you, you are able to slowly and laboriously move this slab open. Uh, within is a fairly unassuming crypt. It's just, uh, is it called a coffin or a, a, it'd be a coffin, right? The difference between a coffin and a sarcophagus is that the sarcophagus is like a, like a, a diamond shape. Yes. So um, this one's rectangular. So it's just a, a stone coffin um, lying just open. There's, there's no lid or anything to it. Well, hand me the bag of bones. It's time to pick up the small ones. Hands the bag of bones. Um, no, why don't we just bury them all together? Would that be so bad? Well, they have two different, they have two different crypts. Look, I don't really care that much about this family as like a family unit. The children should be buried, but decimating their bones any further by actually rummaging through them and finding each 300 bones that, you know how uh, a human uh, finger, uh, the tip, the tip bit, uh, looks very much like the toe of a child. So perhaps not the best. Look, we really, we really <laughs> screwed up with these bones. bones. I'm not going <laughs> to lie. So I, if you would like, we can, we can just put them all in, seal them up or distribute them evenly minus an extra skull. And then we say a few prayers, and that's that's that. I think putting them all together would be lovely. That way they're all, all together in the afterlife. It sounds nice. I'm going to go with you because the, the process of splitting up all the bones is going to take, like, so long. Um, and I've already mucked up enough burials in my time, so why not, right? You what? I'm not going to look into that one. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, bones? bones? Yeah, so I I'm going to uh, carefully lay the bones down in the, the coffin um, and shake off the dust of... Uh, Bartholomew's cloak, which he was using to carry all the bones and, and hand it back to him. So you're just going to shake all the bones into like, the... Like, like lay the bones in, kind of scrape them off the cloak, and then pull the cloak out. Gently, okay. Gently. All right, so they all kind of fall in a jumble into the coffin. I put the skulls at least near the, <laughs> the head of the We've Corresponding kid skull, like make sure the yeah. right one is in the right the right coffin. All right. I would feel is the right thing to do. And then the extra handmade skull, I'll dig a small hole between, is there any dirt on the ground or is it, is it just oh, there's stone? There is, there is dirt on the ground, but there are other, uh, there are, are other crypts intended for other members of the family um, um, throughout the hallway. I am just so going to dig a small hole between, wait, is the, is the baby, did the baby have one? The baby did have one. I'm going to put um, the maiden's skull over where the baby's is. I, oh, I don't think we should split up the bodies. No, just the skull. The skull would be bigger because it's a, it's an adult right. woman. Right. Why would we split up the bones of her body? Because I don't want to bury her with the children. Because the children didn't like her. And we know that the baby was hers. So bury at least what we can of her close to her child. All right, I feel like this is a bad idea, but I, you know, I'm not the smartest one here, so it's fine. I do my best, sister. That's why mother and father sent me to the book college. <laughs> right. I've done some learning. I have read a book. <laughs> and now I'll just sure. walk over and let's, begin let's go with this guy's plan. digging out a small hole. All right. So you, you dig a small hole in the, the baby's crypt and, and bury the uh, the mother's skull the, in there. Yes. Uh, the maiden's. Yes. Maiden's, yeah. Well, the baby's. Well, I guess the mother. Yeah, the, yeah. yeah. 
semantics. So, I mean, you know. <laughs> well, in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Ghost, I suppose. The who? These people suffered quite a bit in their life. Um, and frankly, now that it's over, hopefully you have all found your way to uh, the plane that suits you most, where either your life of suffering has allowed you to atone for a good afterlife, or your wicked deeds have led you to a land of repentance. Then just like puts hands together and like does a little bow. Amen. No, we don't what do that. Words? Not all oh, the sorry. time. Oh, it's it just echoes really well in here. It I really it does. Was... The acoustics are actually marvelous. <laughs> yeah. The we acoustics are very nice. Down, actually. <laughs> what? I thought we were supposed to keep our voices down. Oh, yes. Oh, sorry. I was in the moment. It's family. <laughs> Uh, I, I do forget that the siblings are, are very religious. <laughs> yes. Magic is bad and all that. Yes. Clearly. Mm. Well, except divine magics, but that's those are blessings. Mm -hmm. Little miracles. <laughs> Moving on. Uh, <laughs> shall we? Yes, yes so let's, you let's do that. All right, well, which way would y'all like to go after having relieved yourselves of one bag of bones? Um, are you going to go down the hallway to where there is a turn to the left? Or are you going to go straight down the hallway to where you can see some ta uh, a table in the darkness? So the, the, the jumble of uh, footprints, they don't mm -hmm. seem to go one way or the other. They, it, it's it's pretty uniform, okay. no matter where it goes. Between the two places. Mm -hmm. I'm I'm down with going towards the table. Then lead the way, brave sir. Oh, I lead the way. There's the sound of a crossbow, like just cocking in <laughs> the darkness. Yeah, definite shiver up Kefris' <laughs> spine. <laughs> All right, uh, same marching order as before. Uh, all right, so as you uh, get go down this hallway, um, you can see that, like, the, the tunnels in here aren't very wide. It's, it's probably about four feet across. Um, so there isn't a whole lot of elbow room. It's, it's just small enough to be claustrophobic. So uh, by the time you get to this room, it's, it's kind of a relief to be able to stick your elbows out as it kind of opens out into what appears to be a dining hall. Um, so that's a relief. But what isn't a relief is what it appeared that they were dining on, um, as there is a bunch of moldy humanoid bones just kind of strewn across the table and across the floor. It's kind of a grisly scene. Yeah. Bartholomew's gonna, like, walk up to the table, take a plate, and then, like, look at it. And then mm -hmm. there's the sound of a plate smashing, he throws it over his shoulder. <laughs> are, are those... It's best not to think about it. I am just going to I assume completely. that those are animal bones. <laughs> Better help you sleep at night. And the like. Clearly. I'm gonna investigate the bones. <laughs> Alright. Uh survival, I suppose. <laughs> I'm rolling good tonight. Uh nineteen and five is twenty four. Definitely human. For sure. Bartho Bartholomew has like his hands inside of like the skull's mouth. It's like open, looking around. Oh. Huh. Yeah. Throws the skull over his shoulder. You'll you'll even find like a, a goblet that's kind of stained a, a a rusty red on the inside. Two sniffs. Uh yeah, no. Not from me. Are there any obvious exits? Or is there anything else significant? Uh, is there any there is an obvious, uh, well, two obvious exits. There's an exit to the right, uh, and it kind of curl, curves around. You can't really see where that's going. And there is an exit directly ahead of you, 
that also curves. Um, and so this, this room consists of just the table and, and the bones. Are there any other furniture or? Well, it's, it, it's honestly, it's like a picnic table. Uh, okay. It's got like, a, yeah, like it's got like a long bench. So if you like imagined in your mind's eye, like, you know, just a bunch of people sitting up like, like to like to Sunday dinner, just. And it's one table bones. or several tables? It's one table. Okay. One <laughs> table with benches on either side. Got it. Well, I think I would like to avoid the kitchen, so let's try straight ahead. Why is this in the basement? Why is there a dining hall? Or, or is it because it's... My working know. theory right now is that Look. it's a, you know, cult of people. Uh, try to keep it, you know, keep that all hidden. So basement seems like the best place, right? Bartholomew motions to the letter we read upstairs in the library. <laughs> right. All right. Um, let's just go. I'm, it's time. It's time to move on. Straight ahead is what I think is going to be forward. All right. Uh, mm -hmm. Same marching order again? Mm-hmm. All right. So as you uh, move forward, um, you have to kind of twist and turn down this hallway and uh, it is, I, 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 for lack of a better word, it, it, it's spooky. Um, the chanting it is getting louder in here and it, it's almost as if you can make out the words. Um, and very quickly, I think everybody should roll a perception check. <laughs> I'm good at these. Oh, hey. Not mm. too shabby. A ten. A ten. Thirteen. You're muted. Nineteen. Hey. <laughs> awesome. I saw the words pop up. I was like, damn it. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So Vicky's uh, heading the charge, as it were, um, and light just kind of falls off of his clothing everywhere that he turns um and as you guys are walking forward at first it seems like there's a a little like bump in the ground uh where like you know and <laughs> Silmi thinks to herself I, I probably should watch that bump as we're uh getting closer to it so i don't trip over it it would be a shame to get dirt on my clothes but uh as she's watching that bump it starts to move and, and rise and uh, dirt starts falling off of this figure. Um, underneath the dirt, there is pale flesh, uh, some sort of creature with or limbs that are too long for its body, uh, teeth that uh, are too sharp for its jaw. And um, it will look at you with milky dead eyes and sort of make like a snuffling sound like God. And, uh, lovely it's time, to it's time to roll initiative oh my god wings those noises i can't oh Sorry. boy oh boy oh boy I'm gonna build two mechanical <laughs> T Rexes to tear me apart. Oh, bo 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 boy! <laughs> what the fuck are you? I'm gonna eat raw chicken and give myself salmonella. Oh <laughs> boy! <laughs> oh my god! Oh, I switched right. up my dice. I was using a red one, but now I'm using this very bright yellowish black one. Nice. Oh yeah, the one where you the free one, right? Free one? No, different one. D different one? This was from a one Kickstarter that one. I backed. Ooh. Yes, it was a Kickstarter for Eldritch horror themed dice. So when it came in right as we started Curse of Strahd, I couldn't not. <laughs> <laughs> Seems only appropriate. Yes. Made by Infinite okay. Black. They do a good job with their dice. Took a long time to come around, but 
I mean, it's Kickstarter. Yeah. You don't really... Sometimes you don't even expect it to finish, to be quite honest. So, Looking at you, Dark Souls board game. So one of the reasons I picked up um, Wizard this time around is because I backed a Kickstarter and got Fireball Dice. Ooh. Ooh. Uh, nice. All right, well, I'm ready to take initiative from everybody. Um, let's get Kefris. 18. 18 from Kefris. All right. Uh, Silmi. Three. Cool. Uh, Speedy. Fifteen. Nice. All right. And Vic. Seventeen. Excellent. So it'll be Kefris, Vic, Bart, all in a row. All right, at the top of the round. Uh, so uh, just a quick layout of where you guys are. You are in a very tight hallway. Um, I'll say that Vic, you are in front of what is almost a, 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 a fork in this hallway so it goes uh it comes to a head and it, then it goes off into two different directions hmm. cool and two extending creature, hallways creatures creature. right in front of you is it I'm is it y-shaped or like a t-shape it's y-shaped okay so a 90 degree angle got it all right so at the top of the round this creature is going to pounce at the first thing it sees. Oh, you lucky fucker. Notice I said that before saying that. All right, um, how's a 15 for your AC? Uh, it hits. It hits, all right. So um, it's got these long claws. Uh, it, it, it does have a fairly like humanoid shape but it, it is just disformed um and it comes at you with its claws and slashes you right across the chest Oof. uh and that's going to do a number of damage six slashing damage and you're an elf aren't you i am an elf motherfucker <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what that means, but cool. Well, advantage against charm magic. Um. Well, it means something for you, but we'll we'll get Knights back to that. Knights in the courtyard. That shit. Okay. <clears throat> well, you guys might find out. Not all of you are elves. Oh boy. <laughs> oh boy. Alrighty, uh, Kefris, it is your turn. There all is right. A creature that just attacked Vic. Uh. I haven't really had time to prepare my maul, so I'm going to grab at a hand axe on my hilt and just ah! <laughs> swing out with it uh, and right. try and hit this creature. Uh, that's a natural 20. Ooh. It looks like uh, a downward arrow. Ooh, wait, it almost focused. Oh. Yes. Focus. 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 Whatever. It's fine. <laughs> Here it is really big. But it's on the <laughs> dice. <laughs> It just looked cool. All right. Uh, and then, holy shit, that is going to be 14 points of slashing damage. Ouch. Owie. Ow. Uh, and that's and with a critical damage as well, yes. Yeah. There's a crit. Uh, and then I am going to grab my second hand axe that I have and try and swing down uh, towards its leg with it uh, okay. using my bonus action to attack, which is a nat one. So. Do with that as you will. Ill nature giveth and he taketh away. Womp womp. Look, right. that's and how I know the dice is balanced. So, Kef that's, that is how you know. So, Kefris just hucks a hand axe at this creature and it, like, literally just, like, embeds itself in his head. You can just see it rock back. 
um, and that <laughs> that hand axe stays in its head and it just kind of like looks at you and snarls again. Uh, Vic. Right, and this creature is directly in front of me, right? Mm-hmm. Um, I'm going to have at it with my earth here. Hopefully. Uh, that's a 24 to hit. Oh, that'll definitely hit. Okay. That's d8. All right, so that does six piercing damage itself, but um, I'm going to use one of my abilities to expend a bardic inspiration to deal extra psychic damage. All right, let's see it. Um, hold on. It's not how much it actually does. It wouldn't be your um your uh, uh, inspiration die. Yeah, just the, the D6. Cool. Two. Some people's kids. Uh, just another three. All right. Dead. Uh, huh. uh, now tell me, how does your bardic inspiration look when you do this? Um, it's like a, uh, a series of uh, unnerving whispers. Uh, you know, how he just kind of unnerves you by looking at you and smiling. It's that, but he's also like whispering under his breath uh, as he stabs through with the, the rapier. All right. So with a dis or a discomforting look on his face, um, Vic dispatches this thing with a smile. Alrighty. What up, demons? It's your part. <clears throat> this thing is dead, but. You can hear more shrieks coming from both uh, both forks in the hallway. Uh, oof. Loud oof. Just gonna... Like, elbow Victor in the back to turn him to one of the hallways so we can see down it. Mm-hmm. All right. Um... <laughs> So as Vic swings, uh, you can see uh, the reflective light uh, that comes back from some predator's eyes flash back at you in oh. the darkness. Aims down the hallway and takes two shots. All right, let's see it. <sighs> as you aim down the hallway, uh, you can see those uh, lights disappear briefly, and this thing comes crashing towards you. Ooh. Okay, so does a 14 hit? Uh, yes. 14, and that's five piercing damage. Second shot does a 19 hit? Yes. Yes. Because a 14 hit, too. Variable AC! It sometimes happens, and that's eight piercing damage. Total five, eight. Um, 13. All right, nice. <clears throat> All right, so um, it takes two crossbow bolts, um, one right into its eye, the other um, will go into its chest, and a creature very much like the one that I described before comes flying towards you and is going to a pick. Oh, no. Uh, it's a natural three. I don't think that's going to help him much. It might. Yeah. What's his bonus? <laughs> uh, a six is not going to hit. Oh, Okay. <laughs> Uh, fortunately for him, a another creature comes from the original hallway that the first one came from. So there and are three creatures. Comes crashing down the hallway. Um, just like it runs on all fours and bounces up on the wall and is going to leap at Kefris. How is a 10 against your AC? A 10 does not hit, but that doesn't stop me from just... <laughs> <laughs> yep, it just, not like, it me. bounces off of the wall and just kind of, like, scratches along the wall as it misses you, just barely. With its <laughs> Gross. inches long claws. Uh, at the top of the round, it's you again, Kef. No, actually, shoot, I almost missed Silmi. Okay. Right there. Waiting for it. Like Sunday. 
waiting patiently at the bottom <laughs> of the round. <laughs> um, could I make some sort of check to see what I know about ghouls? Certainly. Um, this is an undead, so I would be willing to accept a religion check or a nature check. It's the same thing. Probably religion, because when I say nature, I mean arcana. Oh. Okay, then uh, that's an eleven. Eleven. Mm -hmm. All right, that's not bad. Um, you know that ghouls are undead, mm -hmm. very specifically, and also you are able to call these out as ghouls. Oh, these are ghouls! <laughs> and then I'm going to, um, I am going to help my brother. Use my action to help my brother. Because he's right next to me. Right, which will give him advantage on... Yes, I believe that's true. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Excellent. Yeah. All right, conveniently enough, it is Kefris's turn. All right, I am going to... Uh, I've been kind of accosted by this creature, so I'm going to reach over, and now that I've had a little bit of prep time, pull out my maul... Uh, and I will just two-handed swing towards this uh, towards this nefarious no-gooder. All right. That is a bad roll uh, mm -hmm. of, I believe... Was that with advantage? Oh, right. Thank you. I'm <laughs> not going to use that die because I'm very scared of it right now. That's worse. So the best that I got was a seven... Sorry, no, a nine. So does a nine do anything for you? No. <laughs> all right. No, That's it. I can't I can't multi-attack uh, with my bonus action because I used uh, a two-handed weapon. So that's right, so it having I'll I'll try and like make myself look bigger than my sister and just kinda like shout at it. Try to be more threatening. Yeah, try and be more threatening. Alright. Alright. Um so uh Having bounced off of the wall, uh, it finds itself crouched before Kefris, who uh, tries to come down with a meaty club uh, and promptly misses, and then just like is face to face with this horrifying creature. Uh, and he just screams at it in an attempt to get it to. <laughs> and it will scream back, like, Rah! Just recoil a little bit, like jerk up a little bit. All right, uh, Vic, it is now you. All right, so as I understand it, uh, I was in front and then uh, Speedy like shoved beside me to, to shoot this thing and then he got swiped. Now we just kind of all squirm together in this tight that's hallway. Right. The, yeah, that's right. The three of you are kind of fighting for shoulder space in this cramped hallway. And every now and then, you'll just kind of shove the other person out of the way to take a swipe at one of these creatures. All right, but uh, Bartholomew did hit the one in front of it, right? Him, right? Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, then that is the one I'm going to try and stab at first. And I'll go for that and get a 23. Yikes. All right, that'll hit. And do five piercing damage. Okay. Um. And then as a bonus, actually, I'm the only one who is hurt so far, so I'm not going to do anything else. I'm saving my other bardic inspiration for later. All right. <clears throat> so another poke to another ghoul. Um, actually, nope. What? As a... I don't know. How, how do you rule having to cast spells? Like, do I have to have... Uh, a hand free to be technically using my casting implement, which is my instruments. What components does it require? Because if it's somatic, Dang. then yes. Yeah. I'm just, never mind. Forget me. No, nothing else. Okay. Who's this guy? All right, do you have a shield? Is that why you're concerned about this? No, I was just wondering if it was worth taking out a dagger, but nah. Okay. Uh, ba -da -ba -da -ba -da -ba -da. So another ghoul is poked. It is now Speedy's turn. I'm um, going to 
do what I do best. Shoot ghouls. Shoot shit. So, bolt in the one I shot. Uh, does an 11 hit? No. Nope. Bonus action. 19. That is 8 points of piercing damage. Alright, nice. <clears throat> so it dodges out of the first bolt and lunges towards you, um, intercepting the second bolt with its claw as it swings at you again. Oh no. Oof. Natural 20? Yeah. Okay. Well, it was nice playing with everybody. Uh, I will appear in some time well, with I mean, my new your character. schedule's changing, so you can't play on Wednesdays anyways, right? So, like, yeah. this whole, it's, it wouldn't work out. Yeah. It's fine. Three. That's a lot of dice. I won't, Six. I won't let you die. She's got the, the tower. It sounds like a lot of dice. Eight slashing damage. And I'm down. <laughs> oh, you shut up. You're <laughs> and I need you to roll a constitution saving throw. Here we go. Oh, that's a natural 20. <laughs> Did you get a natural 20? It's a nat 20, yeah. Yay! It's like there, yeah. Nice. All right, so he just cuts like red lines down your shoulder um, and you can feel like decay and rot um, getting into your wound and you know that that's going to be a problem. But not now. Um, so that's ghoul number two. Ghoul number three is accosting Kefris, so he will continue to do so. Yay! Uh, ten's probably not going to hit you, huh? No, not me. Alrighty, sell me. Uh, there's three of them. One is on my brother. One there's is two of them. One is oh, dead. there's two of them. Two yes. Left, yeah. Oh, easy. Okay. I will then, um, the one in front of my brother, I will pull out a dagger that I'm sure he doesn't know that I have and I try and stab him. Oh, yeah, that's right. You did. And I will try to stab this mofo. I was a helpful brother. Uh, that's a 21. 21 will definitely hit. Hit it. Meh, for max damage, which is five. Awesome. You have a negative? <laughs> That's <Amazing>. wonderful. <laughs> All right. So you just, <laughs> you're, you're, you're attacking the one that's after Kefris? Yeah, I'm, so I'm behind him. He's like trying to make himself look bigger and attacking this guy. And I just like pop out from under his arm and go, nah. <laughs> yeah, and then I pop back. They, they are yes that's precisely what happens and they are currently in the middle of screaming at each other so like you just kind of punctuate that by just ah! <laughs> all right kefris it is now you i am going uh <laughs> just that's very good sister use the knife and i'll bring my maul up and then try and slam it down on this dude four right. i used my good die so that's a 19. A 19 will hit. Ah, slam a jamma. Let's do this. Let's see it, McGallagher. Uh, four, nine points of bludgeoning damage. Excellent. All right. And that's it for my turn. So you leave a, a pretty hefty dent in its skull. Yeah. Um, and it, its eye is just kind of like a, a little askew. Uh, and it just sort of shakes its head and snarls at you. Okay. Uh, Vic. All right. I'm going to do the other thing now that I can always do, which is Toll the Dead um, on the uh, one that Bart is fighting. All right. Uh, with save? A wisdom save. Oh, shit. Yeah. That's one of those things that I have to do. So. Oh, dear. Oh, these things are not wise. A five's not going to make it. No, five does not make it. And it is damaged, correct? Yes, it that is. That does a d12 damage. Ouch. Four, four. <laughs> Excellent. Thank you. Oh, those big dice sure do seem like they're going to do something nice for you, but... Why do you have to will... word it that way? <laughs> <laughs> All right. 
Well, because I've I've played a character with Toll of the Dead before, and it feels yeah. really good to be rolling a big die, and then you roll a one. All right. That's uh, never happened ever to anyone. So Vic bongs on his water harp, and this thing is hurt a little bit. It goes to Bart now. Yay. Second verse, same as the first. I'm gonna... Does I... Oh, God, math. 14 does hit, correct? Yes. And I'm gonna shoot the one that's in front of me. Mm -hmm. That got told. Mm -hmm. For eight points of piercing. All right. That downs it. Ooh. And then I'm gonna switch to the other guy. That is 15 plus 7. That, that hits, right? Yeah, of course. <laughs> and then 9 points of piercing. All right. All righty. So one ghoul is dead. There is one remaining ghoul. Uh, and this one is the one that's costing Kefris. Um, it's going to try and reach out and pull his legs out from under him. They're smart. They're learning. <laughs> They're figuring it out. Has a 14 to your AC. 14 just hits. All right, so it just kind of wraps its claws around your calf and then pulls. Oh, boy. Um, and instead of pulling you down, it just takes some meat with it. Um, uh. Do some damage. Uh, five plus two is seven slashing damage. Oh, um, and I need a constitution saving throw from you. Why would you need that? That's a natural 20. <laughs> <laughs> Both of you! Okay. I really uh, don't think this is necessary. <laughs> so, uh, that, that's really painful and it kind of itches now, but, you know, you're, you're, you're pushing through. I'm meant to suffer. This is fine. <laughs> I, I was built for this. Uh, Sil me. It is now your turn. Um, I'm gonna try and stab him again because it worked last time. <laughs> <laughs> this dice thing. I love it, but I hate it. It's a 19. A 19. That will definitely hit. All right. And again, that is max <coughs> damage with a five. <laughs> Yay! So tell me how you kill this thing. Yeah! So he, he scratches my brother, and I just, like, look out! And I'm going to, like, shove my brother out of the way a little bit, and I'm going to go, and I'm going to stab him. Like, not I'm, gonna, I'm meant to aim for center mass, but I'm going to stab him right in the neck. Oh, and shoot. then, like, leave the knife in there, because <laughs> I wasn't prepared for that. Yeah. And he just starts squirting blood everywhere. <laughs> yeah, <it'll> <laughs> It'll squirt blood everywhere and and sort of like, uh, oh, what's what's the word when it's um, when it's not going down peacefully? Um, it's gyrating. Death thrall. Yeah, Death it, it'll thrash. Yeah. It'll thrash, yeah. uh, and um, then it'll just slump in a pool, slowly <laughs> growing black blood. We did it! <laughs> Yay! <laughs> <laughs> if you think he's gonna throw uh, throw up now, you see Bartholomew pull out a knife and then start cutting at its hands, their hands. Uh, <laughs> what are you doing? Just, I'm walking away, just holding my stomach, yarfing as I go. They have some sort of poison on their claws. I think it'll be useful later on. <sighs> Wait, you were scratched, brother. You were scratched. <laughs> you were right. Oh. 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 Oh, All right. no. There's a uh, there's a scratch on Bart's arm and a scratch on uh, Kefris's calf. My lady, I got scratched too, but nobody seems to care. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> who, You're the who weird looks, one, okay? Who looks the most hurt right now? I, 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 we're equally hurt, actually. Oh no, not me. <laughs> I'm, I'm at a twelve. Seven points. Um, if you I'm... actually compare the wounds, um, it like. You, you know how, like, in uh, cartoons, there will be, like, a, just, like, a red line and, like, no blood is coming out, and it's all like, oh, yeah, he looks like he definitely got wounded. Um, 
that's that's kind of what it looks like on Vic. Like he he looks like he's cartoon wounded. Everybody else looks real <laughs> wounded with like weird purple bruising surrounding it and like oozing blood and it just it, it looks grosser on everyone else. Uh yeah, while uh Speedy is cutting away at hands, I'm gonna put a hand on him and cast cure wounds. Um or six healing to you. I'm fine. And then I'm going to walk over to Kefris as he's retching on the floor and also uh, cure wounds on him. Oh. For Let's... eight. Ooh, that's full. I I'm maxed. Now, the dagger Thank which you. the ghoul was stabbed with, was it my dagger or was it Silmi's dagger? I think that she would have instinctively grabbed for hers. Because she just like pocketed his, uh, so she'll look down at it and like look over at her brother, go in and like grab it, <laughs> put it back. And actually, it fits. She's wearing a corset, and it fits up into the boning of the corset. It's like a very thin dagger, a stiletto, basically. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So she kind of pops it up in there, and Bartholomew mm. raises an eyebrow because it was like <laughs> on the ghoul. He was just like. Whatever. <laughs> uh, so is that it? We killed the monster? Is that we're good to go? We buried the children and we killed the monster. Monster implies singular. Yep. As you say this, you can still hear uh, a chanting. Just incessantly echoing through the building. I'm going <laughs> to... <laughs> I'm going to tear off the uh, the sleeve of my vestment that I'm wearing and uh, turn it into strips to kind of try and wo- uh, like pull onto my calf uh, just to ter- get it uh, a little bit more pressure to like close it up. Yeah, the magical healing will help with that, but like you should definitely see a doctor for like any infections. Oh, I'm months, sure but... it'll be fine. Okay, you studied to be a doctor. I did. Jeez. <laughs> All right. <laughs> or ghoul hand. Well, no, six. Whether um, or not I achieved getting my doctorate is a completely different story. I'm just not going to pursue story. that project any further. <laughs> um, so we can need to keep going is what I'm assuming. You do my stand at a fork. Is It has something to do with the chanting. Yes, that does seem rather ominous. Are, are we still unable to pinpoint a uh, direction for the chanting? Not exactly, no. But it is definitely louder here, so you seem to be closer than you were before. Alright. Uh, I vote for right. Sounds good to me. Uh, Guide, do you have any um, say in this? Mm, perception check. Where's <laughs> is there like a source of fresh air? <sighs> no. Oh, let me get that phone. Well, out. actually, yes. actually, hold the phone. Actually, give me a perception check here. I can still taste it. Is there hey, any water? Calum dice. Natural twenty. Oh, Whoa, yeah, Calum. Holy moly! Yes, you do feel a source of fresh air. Um, I have to find out where this actually was. Yes, Simply. you do feel a source of fresh air. It is coming from the um, actually the, no, no, no. the do I go down the fork in which you were fighting. <laughs> there is fresh air down this way. So if we want to head deeper, opposite way. Okay, I take that advice. Look, whichever way we go, I feel like the land is just going to be fucking with us. Because this is not the Dales. So, wherever you go, we will follow. You're our guide, so. Not you. Not me. (laughs) No, not you. Sorry, you just reminded me of a song, but yeah. Wherever you two lead. Uh, I'll, I'll, yeah. I'll lead the way down the way that uh, Art mentioned. 
And Bart's like on full alert now that he's seen the ghouls. All right. So away from the fresh air. Basically, yeah. Is where you guys yes. are heading. Okay. So um, you essentially just continue straight down the hallway instead of taking the left fork. Okay. And um, you'll come to a point where you see some stairs leading downward. Um, and it also goes forward. That's promising. But the hallway does continue. Oh, so there are stairs separate from the hallway. Yes, the uh, stairs branch off from the hallway. Stairs? That seems more deeper, right? We go down. OK. Well, shit. Sure. Alrighty. Going down the stairs. We're going down the stairs. Gonna have ourselves a time. Um, and as you guys continue down the stairs, it is becoming increasingly more obvious that this is where the ghostly chants originate from. Uh, somewhere, somewhere down here is where the ghostly chants are coming from. So, good call, Bart. Spooky. It is only logical. So I put on background music for myself, and I got into this weird, like, it's like Celtic dark music. <laughs> I don't know <laughs> what it is, but it's just like that Celtic tune with, like, discord in it. It's the weirdest thing. Continue. I mean, that's probably not wrong because, I mean, I, I haven't heard it, but it's it's probably pretty close because there is, uh, as you go down the stairs, you can tell what the voices are saying finally. Um, and it is a chant that says, he is the ancient, he is the land, over and over again. He is the ancient. He is the land. Are, are you sure it's not Unga Chaka, Unga Chaka, and then Phil Collins comes in on Hooked on a Feeling? <laughs> no. And that's yeah. Phil Collins? Yeah. Yeah. Like like Tarzan Phil Collins? Yeah. Oh. <laughs> something new today. <laughs> like Tarzan Phil Collins? Yeah. You're such a 90s kid. <laughs> Look, Tarzan 90s was a good movie. Understand. <laughs> All right, sorry. But the only jam that you guys are 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 rocking to right now is is cultist is cultist activity. Just just chanting away. The sound of my the the song uh, bleh, the name of my metal band, cultist activity. Cultist Phil Collins. <laughs> oh God! <laughs> Anybody ask him about that? Anybody ask him if he was okay with it? All right, we're going down the stairs. There's chanting. He is the ancient. He is the land. Uh, how is everyone approaching this? With uh, some real caution. Yeah, uh, quietly. And I'm going to tr try and muffle the light as well. In the back. Unfazed. Um, phase. Is this in common? Yes, actually. Weird. Yes, which is actually give me an arcana check or a religion. I'll give you the choice. 13. Okay, that sounds a little fishy to you. Um, using any language other than like an ancient language. Mm -hmm. is usually not going to do much. Okay. So, like, this this seems a little mm -hmm. amateur to you. I'm gonna, like, sneak up to Bart. Speedy. Why are they chanting in common? Is that normal here? Is it? I, were there any spellcasters in my village? Would I know how this works? No spellcasters that you know of. Um, but oh, let me actually think about it for a second. 
You, you, I would, prob oh, you probably would have met like a few of them. Um, like most of the spellcasters that you've met are like Vistani or uh, a part of like a traveling circus type thing. Um, so mostly cantrips is what you've seen so far. I have never seen magic in my life, so. Oh, well, I have not seen any magic other than divine magic, so I don't know either. But normally, when one casts a spell, they do not say it common because that doesn't have any power behind it. You are awfully knowledgeable about magics, even though you say you don't cast them. I read. Hmm. I have a lot of time on my hands. Okay. And she fades back <laughs> into the back of the group. Well. What if it's a trap? <laughs> she she pops back up. <laughs> Eyes just slightly wide and like kind of surprised. Like, uh, do we wing it? Doesn't sound very professional. I have never said I was. Brother! <laughs> what is it, sister? <laughs> the chanting in common. That's strange. It's super weird. I don't like it. No, no, no. I mean, it doesn't give them any power. What do you mean? Like, when I've read about magic in the divine sense, it's, you have to use... A celestial or another language but it's common it just doesn't have any power right so why are they chanting in common that's a really good question and I wish I knew the answer if I they're think... part of a cult chances are they're crazy people well I think we should proceed with caution in case it's a trap I agree so get behind me all right and she makes the noise as she retreats. <laughs> <laughs> it's very and much a like hop, 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 hop. <laughs> This whole conversation is had as you all descend some very shallow stairs. Um, and finally, you will find yourself in a room. This room seems to be a, a little bit like a crypt, but not exactly. There are numerous alcoves in the walls, um, and in each little alcove, there seems to be some sort of relic. So you might even say it's a reliquary. Um, ah. <laughs> aha! Um, but yes, throughout the room, there are uh, wooden beams that are to helping to support the walls, as it seems that this is... Uh, you know, you are pretty far underground at this point. Um, it's almost almost like you would see in a mine, but not quite. Um, but yes, you can you can see all sorts of strange relics in in the little alcoves. Um, if anyone would like to investigate them. Yep. Yes. All right. If you know it. <laughs> Investigation. Nine. Thirteen. Twelve. Alright, uh, and Sp Speedy just literally walks up to one, picks it up. Yeah, he's just like, whoop. Alright, uh, you pick up a small mummified yellow hand with sharp claws. It's on a loop of rope. Hucks it over his shoulder. Alright. <laughs> just go into the next one. Alright. Um, it's a it's a knife that seems to be carved from some sort of bone. Tucks that into his boot. All right, moving on to the next one. I've got a whole list here. I'll I'm go gonna, down it. Uh, investigate that the hand that he hucked over his shoulder. All right. Um, what did you roll? Uh, seventeen. Seventeen. Okay. All almost certainly this is a goblin's hand. Okay. Does it seem to have any? properties about it or well, like i mean it was stored in such a way that 
it seems that these people believe it has properties. Okay. There's Do a lot I of believe that it has properties. <laughs> okay, well give me an arcana or religion check to uh, find out. Let's see. Religion is slightly better. Speedy, uh, in the next alcove you find a dagger with a rat skull set into the pommel. Tucks that into the other boot. <laughs> I got a 19. You got a 19? Uh, bogus. This is fake. This is like this is like sewing a monkey onto a fish and calling it a mermaid. It's it's powerless. Huh. Bart, you find um ooh, guys. Uh oh no, not that one. Okay. Um <laughs> <laughs> you find Oh, interesting. An eight inch diameter varnished orb made from a Nothic's eye. What the fuck's a Nothic? It does say, <laughs> like, it. That, that's what it says, is Nothic's eye underneath it. What is that? It is just a large, like, medium-sized creature. Imagine Mike Wazowski's eye oh, God. outside of the body. That was in character. Thank you for explaining. <laughs> says that it is a creature called a Nothic, and this is its eye. How interesting. And she's gonna like I'll allow you to know it. what a Nothic is. Okay, thanks. <laughs> um and it's you said it's completely sealed. Yes, it's like it's, it's completely a... like lacquered var like it's okay. like a bowling ball. Okay. Uh she's gonna hang on to it and kind of look at it and observe it and examine it while they're doing their stuff. I oh, imagine Nothic scene on an investigation. It's 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 kind of yellow and and green, um, and it's got like a uh, like a slit for a pupil. Um, Seventeen on the investigation, eh? Yes. All right, I'll have you start on the other end of the uh, room. Um, interesting. All right, you find a little, just a little teeny tiny chest, like it's like it's from a from like a jewelry basket or jewelry box, and. Um, you, right? Pluck it open, and inside is a, an enormous tongue. Just like it fills the entire thing. Just quickly close, eyes shut, <laughs> shoot straight up, set it back down. I look over at like the other areas that I could investigate and just. You know, Bart is literally just making his way down the line, like I'm, picking it up, either I'm putting bored. it into his, tucking it away or tossing it. I'm good. I'm just gonna set it back down and then walk away. Just curiosity satiated. It's a bunch of weird stuff. That's kind of the boat Vixen as well. He's gonna carefully place the uh, useless hand back on the, the, the podium that uh, Bart threw it off of and then peer for, around and look for the exit. Uh, Bart, you find a like a like a femur. Um, but it has like holes poked in the top uh, and it has like uh, leather wrapped around the bottom of it. And it looks like kind of like it's, it's a baby rattle, but you shake it and you don't hear anything inside, but it's kind of hollow in the top. And there's holes inside of it. There's a uh, holes in the top of it. And it like, if you can like kind of knock on it and it feels hollow on top of it and that's solid where the handle is, but it's, it's basically carved out of a femur. Shoulder. All right. <laughs> Do you Do mind? I... No, I don't. I don't know. If Except this the box. Robbing? Well, it depends on how long they've been dead. Otherwise, it's archaeology. Pops open the box with a tongue, takes a oh. tongue out, and. For sure, that's a wolf tongue. A dire wolf tongue, even. Oh. Hmm. Throws it against the wall, tucks the box into his bag. <laughs> Your match just sticks to the wall and slides down like a slug. <laughs> you know what? Let's say we take care of this monstery fellow. And then you can do all of this while I am in another room. You two are the one paying. Uh, we are. The two of we're... us are paying, and I'll look over at Silme, who I made cough up the entire fee. We, which we have yet to discuss, are paying. 
Where is the exit to this room? There are two exits. Uh, one that slopes down into some water and one that goes off in to like more meandering. More okay. tunnels. Glance down at <laughs> uh Kevin's sandals. Well, looks like you're dressed for the occasion. Always. Okay. This allows Head plenty th of rocks to kind of find their way underneath my foot. Uh, but the the, the thing that it slopes, it, it's definitely going down into the water. Mm -hmm. Down seems like a way to go. Uh, so down into the water, I go. No, 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 no. What are you doing? What? No, 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 no. Not going. Why would we can't hear the chanting through the water? Well, well how deep does water look? How deep yeah. does the water look? I mean, like you, I it, the slope is going down, and then there's just water on the slope. So, like, you have to get to the deepest part to know how deep it goes. But wow. yeah, yes, I don't think this is very wise. What if there is? What if the creature is in the water? Then we have to kill it because that's the thing we came down here to kill. Sounds like a good way to find the thing that we're here to kill. But you need to cast, you cast magic with your thing, yeah. which cannot play underwater. You don't know that. He did call it a, what was it? A, a water. It's called a water phone. A water phone. Obviously, yes. obviously that means it can work underwater. Let me ask you something. Have you ever tried it? No. Physically, no. Fine. That's gonna be fine. I mean, we but, can go the other way, but I don't know. I just had a good feeling about this way. Why don't you swim ahead and see how far it goes? We'll tie a rope to you, and you can explore. And when you're ready to come back, just tug on the rope, and we'll pull you back. How about you, Speedy? Which way do you think we should go? Rubs his finger on his shirt. <laughs> oh, you just went corpse digging. I do not feel any fresh air down here, so I figure whatever. Well, to abate your concerns, we'll avoid the water direction. Yeah. Does that, does that sound good? Sure. Sure. Mm -hmm. Sounds great. All right. Towards the winding looking way. All right. Uh, so you go through some winding tunnels uh, until you find yourself in what appears to be a prison. Um, there are shackles on the walls, uh, just numerous alcoves with uh, each one with a place with shackles. The water looking a little better now? Oh no, I do not want to get my outfit wet. Have you ever tried swimming in a corset and a dress? I do not own a corset or dress, so no. And she Basically, made me do yeah. it once. It really is awful. Oh my gosh, that was hilarious. <laughs> <laughs> but it did make your figure look better. It did. It did. <laughs> Still wouldn't do it again, but... Is anything occupying the, the manacles? Not most of them. <laughs> Why you gotta say it like that, Wayne? <laughs> well, good. <laughs> <laughs> well, okay. Uh, as, as you guys are wandering through these prisons and sort of bickering, amongst yourselves um give me a perception check Always. so i know who finds what. 15 for me 15 price is right rule 16. <laughs> what for sell me uh so i don't know why i rolled the 14. <laughs> okay Sorry. all right not bad not bad. Um, <clears throat> so, uh, freaking Speedy rolled the highest because, of course, he did. Um, 
so as you guys are wandering through this prison and just kind of like poking your heads into cells and looking into alcoves and and seeing where um there are just rusty manacles just kind of left empty um Vic will find a skeleton um He's wearing a tattered black robe, and he's still just locked up in the manacles. But uh, if you were to look at this guy and think to yourself, "What does a what does a, a a cultist look like?" That looks pretty cultisty to you. Does he appear to have anything on him? Any, I guess, belts or pockets or anything? No belt, no pockets, but um, his hands are kind of up like this, so sort of like at eye level, and you can see that there's a golden ring sticking off of one of his bony fingers. Eh, I mean, Vic's not into to looting, so I'll just pass by it. If it doesn't look like it has anything, I guess, information-wise. I'm sorry, did you say there were any documents around him or anything like that? No documents. Okay. Just prison. <laughs> no documents, just prison. <laughs> Only prison. <laughs> Only prison. Uh, however, uh, Speedy, as you are wandering through and kind of poking your head into cells, um, you come to a point where you see kind of like a little circle of light in the shadows of one cell and you can approach it and um, kind of poke your eye through and uh, it's, it's, it's just a hole in the wall and you can see through into the next room which is very dark but you can kind of smell like the wet of you, you can smell damp rock and you can kind of hear um, water settling just like little wet sounds dripping oh hey miss you're not gonna like this what you make way for her oh i don't like it you're correct <laughs> she kind of stands back and as you put your hand against the wall to sort of peek through um, you can feel that the wall doesn't feel right. It's not the right texture for stone. Um, I do. Both of you. Okay. Um, I'll uh, use my nail and kind of scrape a little bit to see what it's made of. Dusty, uh, painted. Sounds like wood. This wall is false. Well, you could. I, oh, I don't know. It's it's a wall. <laughs> Perhaps we should try to see if there is a, a way in, and she'll start knocking on it. <laughs> see if she can find like a secret entrance, secret door. <laughs> All right. Well, this sounds like an actual. Uh, this sounds like a moment for an actual uh investigation role instead of me accidentally saying investigation and everybody going oh all right <laughs> i'll investigate uh, uh, investigation is a 19. 19. Smart. Smart all right, so like you're, you're just kind of like knocking around edges and um like it just suddenly occurs to you i wonder and you just stick your finger through the hole and then like pull a little bit and oh. like the whole panel just oh Right off the wall. You can just Wonderful. pick it up, move it aside. Aha. Uh -huh. And she does jazz hands. And her brother as she moves it aside, does the, the light flood into the room at all? Yes, the light floods into the room. And at this moment, um, it's very strange. Uh, you notice something that is no longer there. And this chanting that has been going on since you entered the basement has suddenly ceased. Uh, and the light just kind of flashes across the room. This place is enormous. Uh, there is a little area for people to walk on, uh, but the whole, for the most part, 
the entire room seems to be filled with water. Um, and Ooh. like around the edges, there are just some areas to walk on. Uh, stairs go down into the water and then back out. So like, it's, it's not a complete circle, but like there are areas where it's wet uh, to go through. Hmm. Um, in the middle of the room, there is, ooh, how many, how many sides is that? Uh, two times four is eight, an octagon. It's the octagon. <laughs> <laughs> it is an octagonal pedestal uh, that just kind of stair steps its way up to a flat bit. And then on the flat bit, there's some sort of altar. Is there um, anything on the altar? There is nothing on the altar. But there are rusty chains and shackles dangling from the ceiling directly above it. Sounds terrible. Would that be a good time for us to go into our break? Is entering into this room? That's a good idea, actually. Yes. yes so would like to say thank you to everybody who has stuck with us so far for getting to this break point because this room sounds fucking horrifying and I hate it. I hate all of this. <laughs> but at the same time, Wings are doing such a great job. I am loving this. Thank you. Thank you for running uh, even just Death House and Curse of Strahd as well as going to run Curse of Strahd later as we go. I think it's going to be a really fun time. Um, so we are going to try and be back in five to ten minutes. So don't go no place unless it is to grab a food, grab a drink, grab a friend, or potentially even grab some merch from in-store adventures that you can find in the this is in the description of either this VOD, our YouTube video, or any of the audio cast listenings that you can find us on. Uh, so again, we're going to try and be back in five to ten. So uh, don't go no place, and we will be right back. All right, everybody. Bye bye. Hello, everybody, and welcome back. <laughs> RJ's just been chugging sriracha the entire time. I don't know why he does this, but it's been happening. And if you check out Indoor Adventures or the Indoor Adventure on Twitch.tv, you can see him do really weird shit all the time, too. I just got, you know that scene from Flashdance where she's in the warehouse and then it cuts to like her pulling a lever and then it's just a flood of water? Just imagine that with sriracha. That would burn so bad in all of the micro cuts on my body <laughs> from just handling papers. Anyways, so, Wings, we walked into a spooky room. That's true. You find yourself in a spooky room where there is no longer any chanting. And there's an octagonal dais in some murky water. It's pronounced dais or dais? I've always heard it pronounced dais. Yeah. yeah. I've, pr I've heard it both ways. Hmm. Anyway, it's an octagonal dais and uh, <clears throat> there is an altar with some spooky chains dangling above it. And uh, the altar itself just seems to be caked with dried blood. It's disgusting. Yeah. Um... However, you all find yourself standing on a ledge outside of the water with a secret door behind you into a prison. You can see off to the left, there is a gated portico, uh, which is to say like there's just bars in the water leading outward. And you can presume that that would have been the way that uh, Vic wanted to go with the... Ah. Yeah, the, the slope. So there is an exit, and there is an altar. Uh, so what now? That is a good question. I was kind of expecting a thing to be here. Why did the chanting stop? Why did the chanting stop? It's a trap! Well, if it's a trap, where's the trappy? Well, not the trappies. The the, the trappies would be us, dum dum. Yeah. No, exactly. the trappies would be up there on a wire. Oh, nice. there are a lot of manacles. <laughs> um, perhaps we should throw a stone in the water. You see Bart like about to step in and then 
pull back is like, yes, but he's smart. <laughs> I find a rock and toss it into the water. It's the watcher of Minas Tirith all over again. Uh, Anybody fine. see Amnesia the Dark Descent? Yeah. No, mm. don't, Wings. It's fine. I'm sure it's Not that fine. I've mentioned it, I can't use it. <laughs> I look true. for any splashes in the water that are heading towards us. Skaploosh, skaploosh, skaploosh. D- um, so, uh, um, Vic, you have your shiny light on your chest, yes? Yes. Okay, so w- you wanted to know how deep the water is? So if we oh. sploosh in a rock, we can see how long it takes to reach the bottom. Light on rock? Toss that in. Mm-hmm. Uh, the water is really murky, but um, you can kind of count how long it takes for that light to stop moving. Um, and it is like, give or take, maybe one and a half to three feet deep. That's not so bad. So not not too deep. These imperial in Barovia. Yeah, obviously. They're really backwards, so that's probably the best thing to do. An insane man in charge of an entire country. <laughs> yeah. The ledges that you're on are Which about like about border security. <laughs> <laughs> Listen. <laughs> Listen. We're gonna establish the mist and make favor and pay for it. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, getting distracted. Getting Sorry. distracted. Sorry. Sorry. The ledges themselves are about three feet above the water. However, the water seems to be less deep than that. So there's like less, like less of this is filled with water. It's 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 half empty, but more yeah. so. I are we going into this? Are we going towards this dais? I guess we. See- we approach the uh, the altar. All right. Um, Gingerly takes his foot and dips it into the pool. I'll I'll put my arms out for Silmi to hop in, so that way I can carry her over the water. I'm down with that. <laughs> so what? We're just hopping off the ledge into the to the water and approaching the dice. Walking across, I suppose. Yeah. All right. Uh... All right, so everybody's Vic going will, together. Vic will yeah, take the lead. And... Well, but, but, but yeah, why don't I stay over here? Uh, that way, uh, I will have a view of everything. That actually uh, is a really good point. Should um, I stay with you... you? I can shoot. Yeah, that's what I was about to suggest. Oh, so you and I to the dais? Yeah. Vic, Okay. I'm sure that's fine. Great. I'll uh, slide off the edge into the and just kind of plop down into the water a few feet below. I shall follow suit. All right. Sploosh, sploosh. It is gross. This is really gross water. This water is so nasty. Oh my god. Does it have like a layer of sediment at the bottom that my sandaled feet just sort of like? Uh, of course it does. Oh boy. Oh, like and and walking in murky water wearing sandals is always the most always pleasant experience. Point. He's doing it's it. It's kind of like yeah, nah, same same shit, different day. <laughs> you do this every day. Well, Why? Every... This country is strange. I don't need to say it anymore. You know what I'm going to say. I'd like to point. I'm not. From around here. This is just a weird back country around a hill in the Dales. Is what this is. Maybe we're in Shadowdale. Maybe the maybe those okay. filthy magic using Netherese wizards did this. Whoa! Wow. Well, continuing <laughs> to slosh through the water up to the dais. <laughs> Uh, as Kefris sort of lags behind and and postulates to himself, um, you find yourself uh, walking up the steps, uh, dripping murky water down onto the marble. 
and you approach the altar, which has what you can now see, uh, a knife on the altar. Uh, all right, it's just sitting on, in the middle of the altar? Or in the middle of the, the dais looking yeah. at the altar. Okay. Um, I am not going to gra- grab it. However, I will cast my Mage Hand and have that grab it. All right, so Mage Hand picks up the knife. Yep. All right, so the knife starts floating in front of Kefris as he still has, uh, in the same breath of cursing those dirty magic users, um, that knife begins to float. And uh, suddenly there is a change in the room, uh, a rumbling. And um, like the the chains above the altar start rattling. Um, That's the trigger I was looking for. Everyone on the... What? (laughs) Everybody standing on the ledges can feel like the sudden like shift in the room as like some dirt just kind of falls down from the ceiling. And uh, the chanting begins again. Uh, he is ancient. He is the land. He is ancient. He is the land. Uh, Thirteen dark apparitions appear in the ledges overlooking the room. Each one resembles a black robed figure holding a torch, but the torch's fire is black and seems to draw light into it instead of letting light leave it where you would expect to see our fate uh where you would expect to see faces are voids so just empty hoods holding black fire um and that he is the ancient he's the land stops and then one in the middle says one must die and then on either side of him they say one must die And then all of them join in. One must die. One must die. One must die. You know, that's just, just, we don't have to be here. That's just, I think we're good. I think we've done what we came to do. Continue to chant. Just chanting one must die, one must die over it again. Mm Mm-hmm. Hmm. Hello. Sorry. Hey, you guys. One of us doesn't have to die. You know, some a lot of people have already died in this house. I think that uh, demanding one more is a lot. Uh, one lifts his hand and all of them stop. And he says, you will not satisfy the sacrifice. Oh, me, you no, know, there doesn't have to be a sacrifice. I mean, good, we weren't planning on having a sacrifice. Not so. at all, no. And we shall do it for you. Lorgoth, the decayer, we awaken thee. I'm sorry. <laughs> what? <laughs> uh, and then you all hear a wet sound coming from the other side of the room. And what you see is a pile of bones and muck and decaying bodies that seems to be where, like, you know, like, just kill somebody, bleed them out on the altar, drag them over, drop them. <laughs> you know, that's, that's what it is. Oh, and it's yeah. just a pile of dead sacrifices that is now sort of convalescing and pulling itself together and beginning to roll forward towards you. Uh-huh. So it's time to roll initiative. Fire! <laughs> Yay! <laughs> oh boy. So it is a spherical room, right? Sure. Jeez. Okay, there's a dais in the middle. We came in on the right side of this room? Circle. Sure. Okay. Well, yeah, right doesn't say we came I mean, in. Prior. Right doesn't really mean anything. Let's let's talk on the in terms eastern. of northeast, south, and west. On the eastern so, side of the room. Let's say the west side of the okay. room. Okay. Just because of the map that I'm looking at. Okay, that's fine. So dais in the middle. We entered on the western side. Yes. And where is this creature coming from? North, south, or east? The creature is coming from the south. Okay. Gotti. 
And the ledge, does that go all the way around the room? Or did you say there was... It goes uh, all the way around the room, but uh, it has stairs leading down to the portico on the north side, and it has stairs leading down to where the creature is. Okay. And Okay, and the portico is on the north side. Cool. I got a 16 on my initiative. Me too. That's a 19, Mom. Which of you is faster? I have a dex of 16. He's faster. <laughs> Vic, 19 for Bart. I got to three. Lorgoth, the decayer. Uh, it's such a good name, which makes me really hate this creature even more. And in last is Kepris. Okay. So uh, this thing is just slowly moving forward. Um, you can kind of see it moves in almost a sluggish-like manner um, on the sides where like uh, skeletal hands come out to just kind of grip the ground and pull it forward. And the rest of it is just kind of tumbling. Um, and at the top of the round, it <laughs> as always, is uh, Speedy. No, the, the ghouls were on top before. Yeah, uh, so I'm going to shoot it twice. Okay, Good. let's see it. Get it. Oh, that is a... I rolled twice. Um, one's a natural 20. Nice. The other one's a 19. All right. And if I was a hex blade, this would be cool. So for the natural 20, I got, man, that's bullshit. Sorry, six points of piercing damage because I rolled a one and a two. And then for the 19, that's a three, so three, six, nine, 12 points of piercing damage. Whole total? Yes. All right. So you add your dex to the first one? Yeah. Okay. So, um, you, you, uh, oh, right, it was, one was a critical. Mm -hmm. Okay, so you aim your crossbows, uh, and you just watch the bolts disappear into this mass. Oh, it's just the one crossbow. Next. Vic, you are up on a dais. All right, so when he shot the crossbows as it added, did that look like it did much it did it just disappeared into the mass but it is large uh, <laughs> can i also shove silmi into the um alcove that we just came out of sure if silmi will allow you otherwise oh. there's gonna have to be rolls involved oh, that's fine jeffers i don't think we should stand here any longer uh <laughs> what makes you say that friend <laughs> Um, can, can up above, I... Lord Goth, Lord Goth. It's like a wrestling ring. You gave it away. <laughs> Am I able to hold like a movement? Because <laughs> I don't want to leave him alone up here. Sure, but uh, tell me what you would like to do. Well, first I'm going to cast all the uh, toll toll the dead, mm -hmm. Bong Town uh, wisdom saving throw, please. Okay. 11. That does not make it. All right. He has already been hurt. So, D12. Uh, it's a one. <laughs> I one told hand, you. Please. I told you this would happen. I'll have I one, warned you. one necrotic damage, please. One. Well, you can have one necrotic damage, but don't, right, don't spend it all in one place. Spend it all in one place. Um, and then I I don't want to leave until uh, Kefir sleeps. I'm standing okay. by. So I will, I, I'm okay with being like, you guys move at the same time. So like you guys are always just adjacent. So just say that you're moving this round and we'll assume that both of you are moving at the same time. Okay. I mean. I, I'm going to assume that you're not going to leave him. Yeah, I'm not going to leave him. But like, all I'm saying is that uh, since he's lowest in the turn order, he'd probably be. The, the one that actually moves both of us at the same time. Yes, okay. that's what I'm saying. 
Cool. That I am waiting for him to move. You cool with that? Everybody cool with that? Yes. Nice, 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 nice. All right. So now it is still me. You have just been pushed back into an alcove. Can you find yourself in a prison cell. Me? Sorry, what did you say? Can my brother see me? Mm. Yeah, probably. I mean, it sounded like a perception check to me. I got an eleven. Yeah, sure. You you can you can have like I, I imagine that you see danger and then you immediately look at your sister. Every time. So you definitely saw her get pushed into the alcove. Okay. Oh, while you may not be able to see her now, yeah. you know where she is. I'll find you. Um, okay, I am going to uh I'm gonna cast Frostbite because that just happens on him. It doesn't like come from me. Okay. So it could be anything. So okay. he needs to make a constitution save. Okay. Fourteen. He's good, nothing happens. <laughs> Alright. Um as you do this, roll me an arcana check. Ten. All right. You you notice that as you cast Frostbite onto it, um, this doesn't seem to be having much effect on him. It's not having no effect. Right. But you might say that it's having half as much effect as it would normally. Mm. How odd. <laughs> as if it's strange. It's, it's almost as if it's resisting magic or cold. the cold. The cold. Okay. Uh, um, somebody said a keyword somewhere. Damn it. <laughs> <laughs> So yeah, um, uh, Speedy definitely heard me just say something in a different language. I can piece together some happened. things, but yeah, like yeah, yeah. focused. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, yep, that's it. That Done. Like that. Oh yes, that, I, I, I'm in charge. Yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right, Lorgoth, the decayer. Uh, is going to start rolling towards the dais. And it will give it this thing. It, it, it's big, it's scary, but it's slow. So it's going to start rolling towards the dais. And it's just going to double move to get there. Um, now you find your, you, you will find that it is between y'all and the exit that you came through. So it's big, it's in charge, and it's in the way. And it's new in town. And <laughs> uh, so now it's Kefris. And it is blocking our way out the exit that we came. Yes. But there's something directly to the north of us. I will look at, I will look at Vic. They just need a sacrifice, right? Mm. That's what they're calling for? They said one must die? Yeah, but I don't know what that means. That could have any number of meanings. I'm going to look at my hand axe, like one of the hand axes that I have, and I'll just... All right. Follow my lead on this. And I'm going to look at one of the cultists that are up in the rows above us, <laughs> And I'm just gonna throw my hand axe at him. Just any of them. I'll I'll pick the main guy. Give me a roll. Okay. That is going to be an 18. All right. The hand axe will uh, fly <laughs> directly into the main guy. Um, and when I say directly into, I mean directly into. Like his being just sort of folds in over the hand axe and falls like it's an empty robe. And the chanting stops. And like all of the other robes kind of look over at that. And then one by one, they all just like, plump, and then like all of the robes start falling. Yippee. <laughs> <laughs> and the creature is completely unaffected by this. Yeah, the creature's just. 
Okay. I want to give her that. LB, get on it. I am going to just be pulling at my cords so fucking tight. I can't feel the pain in my arm anymore, but there's definitely just blood coming off of my right arm. And I'll look at Vic and just... That clearly didn't work. So... Eh, <laughs> that one or that... Protocolus, run. Okay. And we start heading towards the north. All right. Uh, you guys have enough movement to get there. Um, it is closed. Uh, but there is a way to open it. And I need to find out exactly what that is. Well, I've already used my action, so unless it's a very obvious lever that I could use an interaction with. All right, it's it's a wooden wall. It's a, a wooden wall right next to, or wooden wall, excuse me. It's a wooden wheel. <laughs> I know words. It's a wooden wheel right next to the door, and you can... All right, uh, I am going to prep myself on the wheel to start turning it, but I know that I wouldn't be able to turn it without a full action to be able to interact with a large, uh, a large thingamajigger. All right, I'm into it. Yeah, so that is my turn, is just throwing, wasting a hand axe at a bunch of drop men, uh, and then running. All right, cool. I like it. Yes. Sorry. It's it's on the map. It's just really dark and it looks like a shadow. <laughs> a I, shadow. I, I can see it. It is there. It's 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 a large wheel of like, you know, like you kind of have to get your whole Yeah, yeah, yeah. I have to use my whole bod <laughs> in order to do it, right? <laughs> That's right. Uh, <laughs> this is calisthenics going yeah. on. Yeah. Okay. Getting Sorry. Hyped. I got distracted by, by uh, Shimin in my shoulders. <laughs> All right. It is Bartholomew at the top of the round. Uh, uh, Lorgoth is pretty close to you now. But still it, down in the water. Okay. Uh, just turns to Silmi. Run. And then he hops into the water away from her and just starts firing crossbow bolts and whistling at him. Oh, shit. <laughs> Poor brave bastard. What is he okay. whistling? Like three little birds by Bob Marley and the no, Wailers? It's, like, it's just like, you know, you pick the two. Oh, the wolf yeah, whistle. Yeah, yeah. Okay. And the over wolf here. whistle just over and over again. Over here, pop, pop. Got it. Agro! 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 You know, the great thing about rolling multiple dice is the probability of rolling a critical goes up. Oh my god. And you're rolling that one? I rolled a 20 and a 1. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> Why? So, the, at five percent for each dice, so zero point zero zero five percent. I took statistics for like three years because I kept failing. So, all right, roll damage, nerd. <laughs> There's some things that are ingrained in my brain cells. <laughs> That is max damage on one dice. Uh, so that's six and four is ten. Plus three is thirteen points of piercing. Thirteen points of piercing. All and right, then once, a one. Once again, uh, you fire a bolt and one just bounces off of a skull and you fire another bolt and you see it disappear into the uh, into this creature. I, didn't, I wasn't about to say anything. <laughs> We're about to give the name of the thing up. Definitely. Into the <laughs> mass of creature it is. It, the, the shuffling mass. The <laughs> shuffling mass. <laughs> My favorite. The shuffling pile, you mean? Delicious. All right, Victor. Uh, toll. Oh. Um. All right. Uh, what is this again? Wisdom? Yes. Never mind, it doesn't make it. That's a natural five. Nice. Oof. Come on, higher than a one. It is higher than a one. It is a five. Nice. Excellent. Beautimus. <laughs> you guys are gonna how you say nickel and dime your way to victory. Hopefully. <clears throat> 
All right, sell me. Speedy just sped off. Uh, and my where is my brother at this point? Uh, over next to the portcullis, which is on the north wall, and they're gonna try and get that door open. He's facing the the wall. Yes, he's he's Sweet. he's got like his hands. On <laughs> yeah, uh, I'm gonna cast Ray of Sickness, so he needs to make a Constitution save. All right. You did, girl. I get to do a lot of rolls today. Yay. That's a natural. That's a 19 on the die. Boo. Okay. Glory. At least it's not a cantrip. Um. Uh, oh, oh, I'm sorry. Wait. I I need to make a ranged spell attack, no. and then. Okay. <laughs> I'm, save for half, I think. No, no. He takes the damage, and then if he doesn't save, he uh, is poisoned. So he's not poisoned, even if I hit him. So, range spell attack. Nope, I don't hit him. <laughs> Already. It was a four. Four okay. plus. Four plus three. Okay. Good to know. All right. <clears throat> so that is Silmi's turn. Um. What what does that what does that attack look like? Um, it is a ray of sickening greenish energy that lashes out from me. So it's kind of just like this whip that uh, tries to attach it to him, and mm -hmm. uh, it probably just hits the water or something, and then I, it comes back to my hand, and I'm like, <laughs> right, okay, okay. So I'm sure Speedy saw this, but all right, Speedy has <laughs> seen every time. He doesn't care is the problem. Yes. Uh, does any uh, any uh, anything else on your turn? Mm -mm. All right, Lorgoth. Lorgoth um, sort of rumbles to a stop um, as Speedy just kind of splashes into the water. And are you are you close to it or are you rushing away from it? Away from it and away from the other two who are at the portcullis. All right. I'm trying to decide whether or not you're in range for him. Are you are you staying close to it in order to, like, are are you keeping a healthy distance from it, or are I'm you, keeping a like, healthy distance where I can just pop shots off, but I'm also still like whistling at it to get its attention. Gotcha. All right. Like, um, like if if it's the stairs that um by the door that Silmi's at, he would have moved like a little bit away from it. Okay. Uh, give me a second. I'm going to make a roll. Cause. The closest one physically would be Silmi. That's right. And then to the south is uh, Speedy, and then there are two of us to the north. Okay. Um, just going to be that asshole. Um, the creature um, begins to roll up the ledge towards Silmi. I told you to run. He did tell you to run. Uh, he could have made it too. All right, so um, <clears throat> he's going to roll up the ledge and um, Silmi, um, you like <laughs> probably backing away in horror from this like mound, just like coming closer and closer. Um, and it just kind of slaps up against the uh, wall. And then you see a skeletal arm whip out towards you. Ooh, ooh. <laughs> okay. How is a God damn, I'm such a dick. <laughs> Twenty two versus your AC. You know, that doubled my AC. <laughs> <laughs> there goes Steven. <laughs> Okay. Oh, stop fighting me. I just want to love you. You say the weird it? thing to say to this creature. <laughs> uh, 13 bludgeoning damage. Oh. So Silmi goes down. Does she? I have 12 HP. It's fine. Okay. It's fine. It's fine. It's fine. It's fine. So, I yeah. It has multi attack. So, so, well, I mean, yeah, <laughs> I mean, it do, <laughs> I mean... but it's not a corpse kicker, fortunately. True, 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 true. Um, so essentially what happens is that this arm 
comes out of this wall of bones and uh, grabs your face and slams your head against the wall. And the lights go dim. Uh, and then it's just going to kind of roll back uh, slowly and it's still holding on to your face and it's just going to start slowly pulling you into the mound. And now it's Kefris' turn. I Who? am going to look over and release my grip on this wheel and I am going to say you leave her alone and I'm going to rage so I am going to grab my maul and actually run along the side wall of this building uh, using my climb speed that I have uh, to just one hand out with my maul, the other hand's running forward almost on all fours to then get close and then jump off the ledge, grab with my maul, and swing down. See it? Uh, I'm actually going to use a reckless attack as well, if that helps, uh, because I get that as my second level for Barbarian. All right. So uh, that is going to be a 13 to hit. That'll hit. Okay. So uh, that is when I get 14 plus I get to add my rage. Plus two. So 16 total points of bludgeoning damage oh. as I leap off the wall with my maul and slam into this creature. Oh. 36? Wait, no, hold on. What'd you say? No. 16. <laughs> Sorry, I mean, it I can be 36, 36 if you want, but yeah, 16 you was said the 16. number. 16. Sorry, I'm trying to do math in my head. And I'm an art major, so. <laughs> 16. All right. Y'all have done 45 total damage so far, if you're curious. All right. Boom, bam, baby. Kefris just got real. I rage. Oh, that's interesting. I am very upsetty. Mom spaghetti. Mom spaghetti. Upsetty spaghetti, yes. S Speedy. Yes. It's your turn now. It's my turn. Um, you, just, okay. you just watched this unassuming priestly man literally run across the wall um and slam into this thing with a mace huh. a maul it was maul. a two-handed maul that i was dragging oh, it's kind huge of... oh it's oh, okay. yeah it's a heavy weapon i was dragging oh. it through the water on my way up god damn this is gonna be fun um the water underneath speedy just starts convexing downwards as i cast zephyr strike uh, I get to move an extra 30 feet this round. Right. And I also get to do an attack with the D8 force damage. Yeah. Superman kicks. Thank you for the follow. Hey. Followed as I raged. It was important to me. <laughs> <laughs> We've been waiting an entire two sessions for that. <laughs> Here's two a cat for the follow. <laughs> cat follows. Yay. <laughs> Yay. Um, Sorry, 11 plus 18. That'll hit. And then that's 9 plus 8. Um, 9 points of piercing, 8 points of force damage. 9 points of piercing, 8 points of force. Nice. Nice. All right. <clears throat> so, like, uh, is this all just, like, a bolt? It's basically... It? It, he just takes the bolt, points it, and then... Boom, and then it's just this extra thunder to the back of it. All right. So, like, um, it does that thing where uh, a portion of the body just becomes, like, a tunnel to, to like... <laughs> uh, Accommodate the force of this bolt before it slaps back in on itself. You see Speedy like 
as he fires the bolt chases after it and he's just so fast the bolt hits it opens he jumps through it and slides on the other side <laughs> right where Silmi's like getting pulled in <laughs> that's so cool <laughs> I have really cool players. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, is uh, anything else on your turn, Bros? Uh, cannot do that yet, so. All right. So nothing yet. Vic. Uh, uh, hang in there, Sophie. <laughs> and he starts wading through the water, <laughs> wishing that he was as cool as Captain <laughs> <Stanford. laughs> Um, as a bonus action, I'm going to cast Healing Word at uh, second level on uh, Somi. And that will be... Wow! That's, uh, <laughs> that's 10 points of healing. Thank you, and I'm back up Whoa! to almost full! <laughs> yeah! <laughs> and then I'm going, to, I'm going to try and stab. Stabity stab. With the, can I can I get close enough to stab the rapier or is yes, it too far? Yes, I, I will. I will allow this. Uh, okay. And that's a twelve. No. Yeah, I didn't think so. I'm not as cool as Kefir's here. But now we're all just basically in melee. So diversity of targets. I mean, that's the truth. All right, Silmi, uh, you are suddenly awake again, um, and everyone is sort of crouched protectively around you, um, and Kefris is looking scary. Uh, like, he he seems to have beefed up a little bit somehow. Like, his, his arms, uh, which have the ceremonial cords around them, um, they, they are bulging around those cords. Like you can see like in places that it's actually cut and uh, blood is dripping from his arms. Uh, he has a wild look in his eye, like, like never before. And you can see like the tips of his fingers are just a little bit pointed. Um, it looks, he looks different. Ephraim? Can, can I, uh, I, I am, am I still in this thing's grasp? Uh, well, like, there is a bony hand on your face. No, no okay. mechanical. Uh. Um, I'm going to, uh, pull out my dagger again and, and try and stab this mofo. All right. It worked for me before. <laughs> Plus, all my stuff is ice or farther away stuff. Uh, ooh, that's a 19 plus three. Excellent. Yes, that will definitely hit. Yeah. That's four damage. Four damage. Awesome. Helping! Yay! <laughs> I would like to, if I can, cut off this arm from and it, have it just like... I, I think that's precisely what happens, is that you <laughs> just like instinctively like, ah! <laughs> and then like, now you have a hand. <laughs> Do you need a hand? <laughs> Oh, I get it. <laughs> I'll show you a hand. All right, uh, Lorgoth is going to turn its attention on the more threatening targets. No, oh, those aren't good rolls. Damn you. You might hit I, one of us. And that, you, that was a reckless attack, right? Yes. Yeah, I was after you and I just rolled a two on one die and a seven on the other. But actually, I might be able to hit with the seven. Seven plus. Does a 14 hit? 14 just hits, roll for damage. Ah, I rolled mm. so poorly. <laughs> I'm going to murder you all. All right. Uh, nine plus four, which is 13. All right. Bludgeoning damage. Reduced to half because I'm raging, so down to seven. Oh, yeah, that's good. All right. Um, and it's only the first attack, right? Yep. Or it's okay. all attacks until my next turn. Really? Yes. Yep. yep. You looked way too satisfied at that knowledge. It's good knowledge to know as a dungeon master. It sure is. Um, 
19. 19 hits. I mean, I knew that, but I wanted to say it at least. All right, 7 plus 4, which is 11 Five. bludgeoning damage. So down to 5. Reduced by half. And you are engulfed. Oh, boy. <laughs> There's always the bubble that happens after. It, it pops and you just hear, <laughs> No, this is horrifying. I'm about to kill you. <laughs> this can't be funny. <laughs> All right. Well, that's its turn. Okay. Um, hey, guess whose turn it is now? <laughs> I am going uh, to use my action to try and strength my way out, and I have advantage because I am raging. All right, let's see it. So that, as an athletics check, is a 15. Oh, you do it. Ah! <laughs> like crawling <laughs> my way out of this mass, just fucking yelling as I do. It is just, it is just like wet, like goop and mold and slime, and you like literally just rip a, a like a rib cage in half. Oh, it's in my cuts. It is mm. for sure in the ghoul wounds I took earlier. Oh yeah, for sure. All right, you you escaped the engulf. All right. Is that is that your full action? Is that is that I a will thing go you... and I will position myself with my back to my sister. And I'll point my maul at this creature and just say, never again. Damn. All right. All right. Uh, now it is speedy. Um, yeah, we've got the siblings out. So here we go. Pop, pop. Let the bolts drop. I got a 17 on one die and a 14 on another. Those both hit. <laughs> yeah, I know. I'm my own damage now. Uh, it's four, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven points of piercing damage. Nice. Y'all have done 77 total damage. So far. Do you Just mean see- y'all? This y'all? is like just speedy. <laughs> mostly speedy. It's, it's mostly speedy, but you know. You know, I don't want to him as as the job creator. We feel like we are also responsible. I don't want to worry any of you guys, but I'm on a stack of crossbow bolts left. I don't know how much that is, and also I don't have my wits about me, so fuck it. <laughs> <laughs> that is out of character knowledge, and yes. therefore we don't care. Um, <laughs> Tis found true. So that was speedy. Is that all you all for you, my friend? Uh, He's gonna just pull, try to start pulling Silmi back so that, like, out of this thing's face. Okay. All right. Uh, and then it is Vic. All right. So, position-wise, where, where where is everybody? All right. So, Silmi is up on the ledge. Um, I'm gonna say that you are still down in the water. Uh, Speedy, I think, is up on the ledge. I think everybody's up on the ledge except for you. Actually, I'll say that. Um... <laughs> That's why I was kind of concerned. What? I was just kind of concerned uh, because I'm being left behind. <laughs> As I know, I'm only in two episodes, but don't leave me. It's not your fault. <laughs> One must die. One must die. <laughs> um... I have a weird fear of the fourth wall breaking, guys. All right, uh, I currently think Kefris has our best chance of uh, killing this thing, mm-hmm. both Kefris and Speedy, but Speedy isn't hurt yet. So mm-hmm. Kefris, good work. Keep, keep up the good work, buddy. Um, and I'm going to uh, heal you with a healing word. All right. And you can keep track of uh, everybody's health using uh, D&D Beyond's Yes. Oh. So, if there are any of you who are watching this live and you want to see live updates to our health using D&D Beyond, you totally can. Uh, you, you get back four. Uh, enjoy those delicious, delicious four hit points. 
I'm going to look at you and snarl. (laughs) Okay. Um, going to. It's it's right up right upon me, right? Yes. All right, because I'm going to try and run away, but I don't want to disengage uh, okay. because I want to also cast Toll the Dead at it as I'm running away. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I mean, I don't think you actually walked all the way. Well, I had to stab. Haven't done any melee on him yet. Yeah. I mean, I t- I made an attempt. Oh, you made an attempt. Okay. Well, then you were in melee. Which means, I mean, you can try to get up on the ledge without um, provoking an opportunity attack, but I, if you're going to run straight away from it, that's definitely going to provoke. All right, yeah, I'll, I'll try and just finagle my way around it and climb up onto the ledge uh, as my movement and then cast Hold the Dead on it. All right. And that's a wisdom save? Yes, please. It fails. That's a four. Okay. I'm helping. For, for the one you love? It's That's for the care. one he left behind, clearly. Oh, you're helping. I thought you said I'm hoping. I'm like, hoping what? God. <laughs> it's starting to get to Wangzi hour. So hopefully, you all survive this because it's going to take a lot longer to wrap up character deaths. Um, Vic, sell me. Now it is you. Dear God, why would you say that? <laughs> um, uh, I keep looking at my, my list of spells, and I'm like, oh, yep, nope, still nothing that can work. Um, <laughs> I'm drooling, by the way. <laughs> like, just full-on salivating from the mouth. Um... You know what? My brother's not in the right. Wait, do I think he's possessed? I've never seen him like this before. I have no idea what's going on, right? That's true. Um, a, a check of some sort might be in order. <laughs> you Arcana? did. You did come to like after being unconscious, and now yeah. he's. Yeah. Would it be like a religion? Either religion or Arcana. I'll give you either. That's a 16. 16, okay. Uh, possessed, maybe, by something bad, you're not sure. Because yeah. from his behavior, he seems to be protecting you. Um, <clears throat> and like, that, like this, this is behavior that he would normally exhibit if he were capable of this kind of anger. Mm-hmm. It's like someone just injected liquid rage into his veins, and now he is capable of this kind of interesting. Behavior. Um, okie dokie. Uh, so ha- knowing that, um, I'm not going to cast a spell because he's right in front of me. Uh, so I am going to uh, help Speedy uh, by like tossing him up his uh, his new pack of bolts like i he's like fumbling and i grab them and load them in the thing so you're gonna give him a, a help help action. yeah all right excellent that sounds great uh lorgoth and i'm gonna i'm gonna shift so i'm behind him gotcha i'm cool with that lorgoth is going to attack speedy first because he needs some love or are you are you even close enough for that Probably. Probably. I'm, right. I'm, I'm right next to Silmi, so... Alright, um, 24 versus your AC. Nah. <laughs> <laughs> too high. What is your AC? Too high, too high. Funny joke. What is, yeah. what you is have your to AC? Hit, you have to hit exactly 14 or else it misses. <laughs> <laughs> oh no, that's terrible. Alright, never mind. Uh, 7 plus 4 is... I have to. I, I've had to make this addition before, and it's easy. It's, it's eleven. So eleven bludgeoning damage for you, Speedy. And here comes a roll for Kefir. You know, the the bolt toss would have looked cool, but then Speedy gets like swiped to the side. Pull <laughs> AC. He has oh. advantage on his hits because I use uh, I use reckless. Still, I use oh, reckless. Are you still last reckless turn. attacking? 
You didn't reckless attack last time. Oh, did didn't I? Oh, well, no. Okay, pull yourself why out. You do this? Sorry. Why? No, because I also thought I reckless. No, you time. pulled yourself out, you asshole. Yeah, you he pulled yourself out. Oh, yeah, I did. No, no, no. He didn't reckless attack. He didn't. Yeah. He no, because he pulled himself out. Right. That's and then right. he got you ready to strike. And you would have died. <laughs> Let this be a lesson to you. <laughs> <laughs> a lesson is learned this day. It was a lesson so powerful I heard it through two cameras. I apologize. No, I'm it's sorry. hilarious and great. So he misses with a toe. I will kill you. <laughs> he misses. Good. Bring it on. And now it's your turn. Okay. So, uh, last time I said never again. Uh, and this time, I'll raise my maul up and I say, Will you touch her? And I'll bring my maul down again towards this creature. Touch it. And I will reckless this time. For all you audio cast listeners, I am doing a reckless attack. I have leaned in and made it known. I will make a note. Yes. So that is going to be a 13 to hit. That will hit. Ooh! That's a good, uh, for a total of six, 18 points of bludgeoning damage, because I forgot to add the plus two for my rage. Okay. <clears throat> We're at 99 total damage, everyone. 99 luff balloons. And a bitch eight one hit me. <laughs> oh, that's so funny. All right, uh, Speedy. Well, I have advantage on one of these attacks, correct? Yeah. The first Ooh, one. The first one. Help action. Help action. So this is the first attack. That's a natural 19, so that hits. Yep. And the second attack is a three, so that doesn't hit. Totally hits. Wait, no. Does a 10 hit? A 10 does not. Damn it. You can't blame me for trying. Uh, seven points of piercing damage. Seven, okay. Oh no, I missed. God damn it. Now I'm gonna have odd numbered bolts. Fuck. If you recover <laughs> it, you could just let it go. I mean, like you, sh you could let me know that you seek bolts after a fight. And yeah, br kind of pressing issues. It's pretty expensive. It, this, this, this fighting is getting. Uh, Vic. All right, uh, I'm going to tell uh, Speedy to stick it in there, buddy. Uh, give him a pat on the back. Um, give him a healing thing a whatever it's called heal not healing word but the other one cure, cure wounds. wounds um cure wounds well, is a, a touch correct yeah you patted him on the back T pat him oh. on the back uh you get back 10 hit points um hey. and you also get my bardic inspiration <laughs> keep it up good buddy wait wait now that's seven uh... Hey guys, remember that one fight when we all hid behind Speedy while Kefris just screamed at a pile of bones? I will I not remember like this! <laughs> Why won't you I, let me die? I have one further healing spell for uh, probably Kefris next time, so. Be aware. That is all for my turn. All right. Then it is Silmi. How? Oh man, my music just switched to something super creepy. Um, <laughs> how bad does this guy look? Um, it is looking pretty rough. Um, it's it's just sloughing off bodies pretty much every direction it turns. Um, and every time it is attacked, like more parts go flying off in a different direction. Okie dokie. Like, it's looking pretty bad at this point. Yeah. Um... Also, I, I will say, um, with your check from earlier, 
Kefris probably won't remember this. <laughs> um, I'm going to go ahead and try Ray of Sickness again if I think that's the case. Um, so that is a ranged spell attack. Um, oh, good. Okay. Um, that's 18 to hit. All right. So um, he needs to make a constitution saving throw. Ooh. Oh, god damn it. And it's gone Ooh. forever. Lost to the world. Six probably doesn't make it. No. Uh, so he takes uh, 13 damage. Okay. Poison Ooh. damage. And okay. he is poisoned until the end of my next turn. Ooh, fuck. So on what poisoned is on the beginning of his turn, he takes damage. Is that what poisoned? What does the poisoned gives... effect mean? Disadvantage on save. Let me check my. Beyond. With my the hand. Poison creature has disadvantage Google. on attack rolls and ability checks. Disadvantage on attack rolls and ability checks. Amazing. That. That's very. That's very good. And I so I cast it. This this lash of green energy emerges from my hand and whips at this thing. Uh, making contact and it kind of just like a bolt of green or, or a, like a spider web of green energy flows through this thing. The bolt comes back to my hand and I I look at Speed and I don't tell don't tell Kefris. <laughs> Too busy. <laughs> well that was interesting. Don't tell Kefris. <laughs> uh, it is now Lorgoth's turn. <laughs> And now it's got disadvantage on attack rolls. If he's attacking Kefris, he has a normal attack. Flat. Yeah. Flat, because he had That's advantage. right, because he's... All right, so let's go for Kefris. Then. <laughs> <laughs> oh, sure. Sorry. Uh, right. 10 on the AC. That does not hit. All right, uh, and here's another one for Silmi. For me, I'm behind people! Oh, uh, you're right. Uh, it's for Bart, then. Sorry. 18 <laughs> for, on your AC. Yeah, that does it. That does it. <laughs> Um, okay. Question. What's your AC? 14. <laughs> Shield is only on Self. you, I think. Self. I know, but I'm right behind you. <laughs> Fine. <laughs> uh, I, I, I would normally allow something like that, but mm -hmm. I also play a paladin, so I know that there are spells for that kind of thing. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. no. All right. Give me lashes. Um, 10 plus 4 is 14 bludgeoning damage. I'm at 3. What's your max? 20. Okay, cool. Y'all are second level. You know, Just... this is pretty bad. Just saying. <laughs> All right, uh, and that's Lorgoth's turn. Kefris. Uh, Kefris is going to turn back around and just look towards uh, Silme and just snarl and then look back towards the creature and raise them all again and just try and crack down on it. Oh god, he knows. Uh, I'm, god, going to use he knows. A, I'm going to use a reckless attack. So right. that is going to be a 17 to hit. That'll hit. Uh, for 13 points of bludgeoning damage. All right. This thing is looking really bad. You take off a, a good chunk off the top of it with just kind of like a golf, uh, like a, a golf swing. Like, <sighs> like the lock just goes across the room. And nice follow the through. Yep. That's the important part. <laughs> <laughs> All right, and now it is Speedy. Just picking Speedy. himself off the floor. Have a part of inspiration. That's um, adding a D6. A D6 to any roll. Any including do it to it so that is a natural 20 
Nice. And a 12 plus 7 is 19. So, natural 20, I'm going to do 2d6. Eight plus another d6, nine, ten. That's ten points of piercing, and then three, six, six, sixteen points of piercing total. All right. How do you kill this thing? Ah. Uh, so slowly picking himself up, loads in a crossbow bolt. Ah. Uh, points it like that pistolero like Olympic sort of stance one single shot splits open the sort of like fleshy mound and hits it right in the core mm -hmm. and then it's just like everybody gets <laughs> goop on him I also like that because both Silmi and uh, Vic are kind of just like, huddled next to <laughs> That's right. next to Speedy so just that stance where he's like pointing very dramatically and there's two people just like hiding behind him. <laughs> I have my like... arms cocked back with my maul in one. Just... Like it's this juxtaposition of like Kefir's like splattered and then what's it? Bartholomew has his like pistolero stance. He gets splattered as well. And then Sylvie is like ducks behind him just as it happens. So she gets nothing on her. <laughs> <laughs> there is a moment of peace. <sighs> and then the quake. The, the building what? begins to shake and it does not stop. Rocks begin to fall from the ceiling. The chains are rattling. Skaploosh into the pool. I think Skaploosh that's our cue. Into the pool. Uh, I am going to just turn my head back towards you. Uh, and when I do, I am going to take, I have a pointed claw-esque hand now, right? Okay. I'm going to yes. jam it into my own shoulder, uh, so that way I will try and take damage from myself to continue my rage. Okay. All right. So give me a, a melee, uh, melee, melee damage. attack against well, self. Well, because he's attacking himself, can't he just take it? Yes. I got a 17. I mean, like, I'm not going to make him roll to hit himself. Yeah. <laughs> but, oh, for, like, for damage, yeah. uh, would it be an arm strike? So one plus yes. strength? Yes. I take four, because it's nine and then halved. <laughs> Whoa. Scary. Okay, okay. ghost. <laughs> All right, you do that. <laughs> Kefris! Let's go! Yeah, I just, I follow. I am just maintaining my rage as we exit this crumbling cavern. Okay. Uh, so you guys do that. Um, I'm going to need an acrobatics or an athletics check from everyone to see how well they, how, how well you all escape from and, this. And while we're moving, can I... Quickly slap a cure wounds on your boy, uh, Speedy. Sure. Was that okay. a twenty or a two? Twenty. Okay. Jesus. Nice. Uh, I will... on you, you get another. With, with a natural twenty, I will allow you to forego a failing a, uh, a failing roll from someone else. Okay. I got a nineteen. <laughs> I got a sixteen, mum. I also got a sixteen, mum. All right. Well, you guys are fine. Uh, you. <laughs> <laughs> you are sprinting out of this uh, dungeon. Um, you go through the reliquary where the relics are just rattling in their places and then falling to the floor. Uh, you go up the stairs. Um, you sprint through the the dungeon that you guys all skipped. Uh, <laughs> you sp uh, and uh, are you going to try and go up the stairs that you came from? Or actually, you know what? No. No, I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna have that happen. Um, Bart, yes. Bart, on your way in, fresh air. you remembered a place fresh with air. fresh air. So, at the last moment, um, you have a thought that like, if this house is coming down, we don't want to be in the attic. Yeah. So you you take everybody off 
uh, you, you like, you, you stop everyone from going the wrong way and take them the direction that you found the fresh air. Um, now give me a perception check. I'm good at these. That's a natural 19. Oh, nice. All right. So you take them down an unfamiliar path where you knew that you could feel that fresh air. Um, and you come into a room that has uh, a man holding a ball, uh, like a, a red orb. Um, and the man, I'll, I'll have you know, you, you probably just recognize him just because of who you are and where you're from. It, it is Strahd von Zarevich. Um, and with a, with a quick glance at him, you are able to find where the secret uh, doorway is to get up and out of this building. It's a statue, right? Like it's a statue. Yeah. It's not okay. actual straw. Okay. No. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I was like, um, I am intrigued. Go on. If it was, I cast Zephyr Strike and I run towards the attic. <laughs> I'm gonna take my chances with the house. I am not going that way. Uh, no, it's a statue. I'm sorry. Okay. Did I did I not say it was a statue? I'm no, you just said it was. It. You just did said it was him down? sitting in a the chair with a crystal sphere. <laughs> hey guys. Just, hey, I heard you me. killed Largoth. That's not what happened. No, that's not what happened. Um, it, it is a statue. I apologize. That's I quit. Fine. It's yeah. a statue of Strahd. Uh, anyway, up the stairs, and now you're in a batshit insane falling apart house that is filled with smoke and pendulums pe pendulums up with blades on them are swinging in the doors what? um yeah no like uh bars fall down over the windows Chink! um i need um like an insight check from everybody <laughs> to get an idea of what's going on here insider investigation whichever is higher for you 22 i just want to leave I, I don't think you're in any or shape 21. of mind to Sorry. be making this kind of check, actually, Kefris. That's okay. 19. 19? Okay. So uh, this will occur to Kefris later after a really bad hangover. But um, Vic, this house is super duper haunted. And everything that you guys have been experiencing here, most of it has probably just been the house itself because of all of the evil things that happened here and it wants more th evil things to happen, and it, it's upset that you're leaving. It's the house, bros. The house is evil. Okay. That's that pretty was awesome. The perfect both, hearing both the... <laughs> <laughs> okay, moving on. Get the fuck out of here. All right, um, I'll ask for one more acrobatics check or athletics check from everybody to get through this death house. 19. Uh -huh. That's the name of the thing. That's a 13. I got 11. I got a rock. Bless you. Oh, by the way, did I get healed by a... Uh... Yeah, you took four. You did get healed. Okay. Four or six. I think it was four. Cool. All right. Um, raise your hand if you got less than 15. I did. Vocally raise your hand. I, I did as well. <laughs> <laughs> Vocally raise your hand. It's that like a not... round of applause, but smaller. <laughs> oh, shit. All right. Uh, 10 slashing damage for each of you guys as you get uh, winged by pendulum blades going through the doors. Bart goes down. Um, I imagine, yeah, as we're trying to rush through the building, uh, Bart catches a pendulum and goes down. Uh, and uh, Victor runs over and moves him w along with him uh, and also takes the <laughs> slashing damage with soldiers All right. on. All right, so so like the idea is that Bart went down in in the doorway and then like Vic knelt down to pick him up and took a pendulum as he was picking him up. Yeah. All right, I'm into that. I'm up for that. Cool. All right. Y'all all tumble out of this burning, smoking, slashing building. Uh, and like, you, you can turn around and see smoke just pouring out of the windows. Um, and the whole thing just groans and creaks. 
and kind of, like you can even see like the whole building is just deforming and like moving uh its its walls and grinding um its foundation and it's just not happy are we at the carriage <laughs> <laughs> yeah speaking of that um a, well no the carriage is still there don't worry about it you guys are just distracted by this burning building that's also alive um so uh Silmi, you're like looking up at the building and um, you feel a hand grab yours. Miss <laughs> um, <laughs> Silmi, I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry to scare you. I just, the, the house, it just started doing this and I, and uh, I, I'm, I'm afraid we have a visitor and I just, I, I'm, I'm very, uh, I, I don't know what to say. Did, uh, mm, mm, uh, Speedy fell and he needs healing. Please help. So, um, you visitor? <laughs> Um, she'll go, oh, and like go over to uh, Speedy and um, stabilize him as best she can. That's good. That's good. That's very good. <laughs> you rolled and died again, didn't you? No, I, uh, we'll, we'll talk about it later. <laughs> you need to not roll ahead, Mr. Sir. I didn't give you permission. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, it speeds up the process. <laughs> I mean, I want to I want to drag it out. Come on. All right. Uh, what is Kefris doing right now? Kefris is currently on all fours, arch backed up a little bit, just like snarling at the house. Uh, is your rage going to run out here? Oh, my soon? rage oh. technically ran out inside of the building because it only lasts a minute. Uh, right. but I imagine I just, like, kept, like, taking little bits of damage as I was mm -hmm. going to maintain said rage, or I was injuring myself to maintain the rage. Mm -hmm. Um, so I'll, I'm willing to take any amount of damage that you, that you deem necessary to maintain that. I mean, that's, that's fine. Uh, just, uh, I'll do this. Just knock yourself out. <laughs> Four damage. Okay. Uh, yeah. So I'll take the four. Uh, and then after the house has kind of like stopped collapsing and I finish my roar, my arms will just kind of give out and I'll fall onto the grass. <laughs> okay. <clears throat> and my body just kind of like starts to shrink down a little bit. Right. All right. So Kefris li lying in the grass, uh, Bart lying in the grass. Vic and Silmi, uh, still upright. Vic bleeding profusely from the from the slash. Yeah, he's kind of just holding his side while still staring up at the house, kind of in, enthralled in in the beauty of the haunts, <laughs> I suppose. And uh, uh, Maybell did mention a visitor. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, uh, yeah. Um, I'm just like Silmi is very just like, what the, what the. Uh, it's, uh, uh, Kefris, are you alive? I'm gonna go poke him. <laughs> Gods. Uh, and I'm gonna turn around and look at the cart. Is there someone there? There is, in fact, someone at the cart. Um, the carriage door is swung open and you can see um, the very well-dressed leg of a man just sitting inside. And you can see uh, also, like, from within the cart. <laughs> no, um, uh, from within the cart holding um, a, a teacup. And, and you can see off to the side a, a kettle and everything. Um, you can recognize it's Maybelle's tea set. It seems that she has been entertaining him as he's awaited your arrival. Um, and you see him set that teacup down. And stand up and the whole carriage just kind of bends underneath his weight as he steps down and what you see stepping down from the carriage is a very well-dressed man he's got an ascot on um he's got a really high forehead uh, with kind of a widow's peak going on he also is um he, he he's got pale skin and if if bartholomew is blue if speedy is blue then this guy's kind of purple and he also has pointed ears um and 
you all would recognize this as an elf. And he will just sort of approach slowly um, and regard the house briefly, uh, with sort of a bored expression on his face. Uh, he also has uh, two scimitars on his sides mm -hmm. and he will just sort of approach and put his hands behind his back and say, hello. Uh, good afternoon. Uh, apologies Hi. for um, this. Um, we just, he decided to go in the house, so we fell. I'm sorry, it's been a, it's been a bit of a day. Um, I I'm still can me. see that. Uh, uh, it seems that you've been busy doing my job for me. Oh? And you are? I am Rahadin. And he, oh, actually, he just goes, oh, an elf. <clears throat> oh. I don't get to see many of my kind anymore. And he just kind of like looks you up and down. Um, I am Rahadin. I am the Chamberlain of Ravenloft. And I've been sent here by my master to see if the new souls in Barovia are worthy of his attention. I'm sorry, I'm, I'm slightly confused. Um, is Ravenloft um, a manor in the town? It, it is, and my dear, it's, it's quite rude for you not to introduce yourself to me. Oh, I did say my name was Selmy, but... Oh, did you know? I, I mean, I, I, I say that as LB. <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, my name is Selmy Malrezka, and uh, this is my brother, Kefris. Uh, <gasps> he's, he's okay. <laughs> he's all right. Sorry, I need to speak in my accent. Uh, he's going to start just kind of like walking slow circles around uh, the two of you. Uh, just kind of looking you up and down. Um, you said um, your master um, needs to know if we are worthy of his attention? This is true. Uh, what are you, of noble blood? What are you yes. doing in Barovia? Well, I uh, was on the way north in the Dale Lands, um, and we seem to have happened on this continent city i'm not sure mm-hmm i see so you didn't intend to come here oh no we didn't even know of its existence mm. noble blood plus got lost not so much and you were in this house yes and she turns to <laughs> uh victor Yes. There were children out front. Sorry, I don't think I had a chance to introduce myself either. I'm Victor Grednikov. I'm not interested and... in you. Okay, well, I'm sorry. I just... You just said it was rude not to introduce yourself. I thought I'd say hello. Uh, let's see. Does a 17 hit your AC? It does. Okay. Uh -huh. Hey, um, what the fuck? Yeah. I have some questions. <laughs> How is eight slashing damage? What? Uh, that will down me. Okay. Um, oh so he just like, he, he completely interrupts what he's saying and just mm -hmm. stabs a scimitar into his gut. Uh, did he... And then he just pulls it out, lets him fall. <laughs> oh my God. The chair went down with him. Are you okay, Tyler? Yeah, just fine. <laughs> <laughs> All for the moment. Uh, um, uh, um. That was getting annoying. Uh, and he'll just kind of wipe off his sword. Um, <clears throat> there were children outside of the house. Um, I, I've lost interest in this conversation. I've got another thing that I need to know. And he'll just start walking away. 
And um, as he walks towards the road, you can see uh, spectral shadows begin to form around him. And a horse just made out of smoke appears on the road. And he'll mount up on it. Um, and he'll just kind of look down at the reins for a second and then look over his shoulder and say, welcome to Barovia. And then he'll go. And that's where we'll end for tonight. <sighs> thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. This has been wonderful. I, LB's gone, but goddamn do I love me <laughs> some Ravenloft. So first and foremost, thank you to Wings for DMing the end Woo! of Death House. Thank you. Uh, second round of thank yous to all of you wonderful viewers uh, for sticking around during this wonderful time as we continue on our second part of uh, Curse of Strahd. We won't be able to get back for at least a few weeks Ooh. while Waterdeep uh, wraps up. But once Waterdeep is over, then you can expect this to be a regular Tuesday occurrence. Uh, but... That is uh, that is all show notes. So let us go through our sign off. So Wings, where can we find you? What do you do? Hey everybody, I'm Wings, also known as Danae Keener. You can find me at DanaeKeener.com. I do drawings and stuff, uh, mostly related to D&D, but also some other things, like sometimes Spider-Man. So go and check that out. All right. RJ, where can we find you? What do you do? Hey, everybody. I'm RJ here on the show, but you can find me at rjustice2a2 on Twitter and Twitch, where I stream Overwatch with uh, Indoor and LB sometimes once, like, two months ago. Uh, you can also catch me on the Monday night show as Kalem the Shadowkai Cleric and the Tuesday night show as Hubris, our Tiefling Warlock. And next Saturday is going to be my final day on Pro Restarter stream due to work but I will enjoy it to my fullest. I'm going to be playing Ajax, the Initiate. All right. On Monster of the Week. And LB, where can we find you? What do you do? I'm LB Hackamup. I've started tweeting more. I said I was going to, and I'm doing it. So you can find me at LB Hackamup on the tweets, on the Twitters, where you can find nonsense. It's my birthday weekend, so probably some like high tea, like, you know, facial stuff girls time quote unquote um but you can also find me here mondays and tuesdays on the indoor adventure channel playing gwen and ghost who um yeah stuff is happening man uh and then fridays i normally play on pro research channel at uh 8 p.m eastern time uh but this week i will be out because of birthday stuff but I will be on the uh, Fates, uh, the Young Heroes of Fate on Encounter Roleplay's channel on Sunday at 5 p.m. Um, Abby's going to have some fun um, making people not turn into supervillains. All right. Yeah. And Tyler, where can we find you? What do you do? Hi, I'm Tyler, also known as at Frothy Inferno on Twitter, where I barely post anything. Um, and you can find me actually normally here as a guest every now and then. Um, so look out to see more from me on the Indoor Adventurer. Yes. And of course, I am the Indoor Adventurer. If you've made it this far, you probably already knew that already. But if you would like to check out any of the VODs, you can check them at twitch.tv slash the Indoor Adventurer, youtube.com slash the Indoor Adventurer. Then there's our audio cast at anchor.fm slash the uh, slash Indoor Adventures or indooradventures.podbean.com. Also, if you are interested in supporting us on Patreon, you can totally do us there at patreon.com slash the Indoor Adventurer, where we like to go into an after show where we answer all sorts of great questions from the community. And I do believe that Wings is a birthday gift that she is going to be opening. So when we go into Knights of the Courtyard, we can totally do that. So you should come by, check it out, and find out what lies in store for her. So we will be back in five to ten minutes for that show. But until then, we will see you guys next time. All right, everybody. Bye-bye. Bye.